five yeah Ooh, it's 2022 happy Ooh. new year Way. it's a little bit a little bit late a little bit late for the happy new years <laughs> super tiny little bit late for the happy new years it's 2022 yeah i don't know how i feel about that that year i i, I think about 10 what years year? ago i'd have said the just the concept of 2022 like i like 1999 is like the most future Futuristic fucking date still, right? Even though it's now 22 years in the past, right? Or 23 years in the past, right? 1999 sounds like a proper, that's where you base your post, you know, dystopian sci fi novel, right? But 2022, I don't know. It's past Blade Runner. We it's past, past Blade, Blade Runner. Runner. That's true. Yeah. When, when was Blade Runner? 2021. And Tyler Corporation is still making crisps, not androids. <laughs> 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 disappointed yeah 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 the future's I, we, we went past back to the future what else have we been we went we definitely went past all of the predator movies um because like predator 2 was slept very slightly in the future like the year is 1987 <laughs> just massive just like come on really <laughs> uh, we are past escape from new york are we really yeah. Shit. Which was quarantined before because of the virus outbreak. <laughs> Silly. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, I have to check IDs at work occasionally, and it's so depressing seeing exactly what year nineteen year olds were born in. Now, <laughs> like it just <laughs> time has moved on. I feel so old having to check somebody's ID. <laughs> I, I remember oh, two thousand and three. When... Hmm. Okay. I, I remember I'm hearing all these jokes about getting older and like, oh, policemen are getting younger. Yeah, policemen are getting younger. <laughs> like it really does. <laughs> it does feel like it's like really you're a police officer. You're a child. How is that possible? Like, what yeah. is this? Ah, hey ho. I, so, I, yeah. I, did, I did have a situation of being carded today, but I just had to take off my mask, and they were like, "Okay, okay." Yeah, <laughs> the mustache did it for them. <laughs> <laughs> I was so disappointed. <laughs> so sorry. I have got a cough, and I'm not going to be able to mute. Hang on, I'm going to try. I mean, technically, it's possible that I can. I'm just not going to catch them all. It's just one of these aggravating allergy type coughs, <clears throat> and nobody wants somebody with an allergy type cough around at the moment. So, uh, but but fear not, it is an allergy type cough. Um, so yeah, fuck it, 2022. We we've been rubbish at uh, doing these. Hello, chat. By the way, hello everybody in chat. Uh, wait, can I? I can't hello. Even, can I even see chat? I can't see chat. Why can't I see chat? I can see chat. Hey, Sleepy redeemed first. Good job, Sleepy. That's that's not just first sleepy. That's the first of 2022. You're like the king the of 2022. First. Yeah, that's the first first. Um, <laughs> good job, bud. Um, yeah. So I don't know. 2022. Yeah, I I don't know. That that Blade Runner. The the fact that we're ahead of Blade Runner. That's depressing. Because mm. like Blade Runner looks futuristic as shit, right? Like that really does look super awesome. And we are so nowhere near that. <laughs> um, but then again. I don't know. We've got robot dogs now. Like, we're like the thing that the the thing that makes me the most like feel like I live in the future is 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 this thing, my 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 iPad. That if if my fucking teenage like you know preteen will saw me carrying around this, watching videos on it and having telephone calls on it and chatting to people around the world on it, I'd be like, yes, that's the future. Of course, that's mm -hmm. the future. Like, I think that's, I think the iPad still to me feels like the closest thing that we have to like meaningful future tech. Oh, meaningful because, uh, well, I agree with you. This is like the most futuristic thing ever. However, the most futuristic thing that I would think about when I was a kid was the fact that I have a voice control lights in my home. Right. Yes. <laughs> yeah, but Not we that just useful. We just assumed that would happen though. Yeah. And, and actually, the reality is that you know Alexa and, and Siri and all that other shit, like they're, they're all kind of slightly disappointing. Like they're not they're not nearly as sassy and bantery, and you know none of or them as far as yeah, exactly. <laughs> none of them have gone mental and tried to kill me with my own electronics. I mean, what well, the fuck are these people playing at? Alexa was trying to convince kids to put a fork into the electric socket. Is uh, that is that a thing that's true? <clears throat> that is actually true. Amazon has apologized. This the kid was asking for some challenges, and there, there was like, uh, 
Penny in the socket challenge and uh, Alexa uh, asked a kid to put two forks into the socket and put a penny between them to short circuit. <laughs> It just it just found the word challenge in a search result, and that was the one that came up. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Accidentally found the book of bunny suicides. Have you guys heard of it? <laughs> the book of bunny suicides. If you have never seen it, is a fantastic set of cartoons written by somebody. I have no idea. I've got actually got a copy. Of it. Uh, oh, he's gone. Oh well. I can't Shows see. Well, I, I thought, I, thought I, I thought I had a version of it on my on my shelf over there, but I don't. Um, but the book of Bunny Suicides is awesome. It's just basically these little cartoons where these rabbits are trying to kill themselves. Basically, it's just a bunch of depressed rabbits, and they kill themselves in these really elaborate ways. Um, well, one of my favorites was uh, you see him on you see the rabbit like on the internet, and then you see him sitting under uh, by the by the front door in the house, and then the next panel is just him sitting there waiting by the. <laughs> the, the 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 door in the house. next and the next thing you know he's being crushed to death by this massive book and then <laughs> he pans around and it says Harry Potter Order of the Phoenix basically <laughs> so he just he just ordered it to kill himself it's just brilliant <laughs> um so yeah I recommend the 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 bunny suicides so that's great um Jeez. but yes if Alexa is using that as a training guide to entertain children that's probably has issues um not not ideal not optimal. <laughs> That depends on the results that you're looking for. <laughs> it's true. That's true. Yes. Maybe maybe, maybe Alexa knows something about global populations and, and managing them that we don't. <laughs> I yeah. think Jeff Bezos knows something considering the rockets that he's building. Yeah. So, so I like this conversation. So, like, what other things? For I, I, I mean, everything that DARPA does, like, seems genuinely like Boston Dynamics. Sorry, like, uh, it genuinely seems like that's fucking the future like there was a really there was a really cool video where these guys were like breaking down like there's I, i'm not a big fan of them the, the corridor crew um they they do these kind of special effects videos um but they were talking about how like they did this they did this <laughs> they did this kind of parody video of um of basically the the rope the dogs the kind of robot ais like the walking uh, robots and the, the the DARPA dogs and they were basically you know you see those videos of the people coming at them with baseball bats and kicking them and shoving them and and this one just is like it's just like the, the scientists have taken that slightly to the extreme so they're literally like rugby tackling them out of left field and it's it's yeah. absurd and this this thing's getting the shit beaten out of it and it's all sort of special effects but it's really it's quite funny it's well done um mm. But honestly, every time I see those special effect things, like it's insane. And and, and sorry, it, they, those real robots. And they were saying that actually a lot of people don't believe that the recent video that they put out, uh, which was the robots dancing, they had the the, the DARPA dogs dancing and the and the I think they called them the Atlas ones dancing, um, and then the kind of robot weird fucking dinosaur ones that they've got, and they were all doing this dancing to the Do you love me? Um, uh, it was fantastic. It's an amazing video, um, and apparently, loads of people think it's fake because they just they don't. It does look fake, like yeah. Except it doesn't. Except no part of it looks wrong because it isn't. But like, you, there's something about it that just your brain's just like, yeah, that's just CGI. Robotics is something that has always captured human imagination, and it was always in sci-fi, in fiction, and everything. So now to see it actualized, I think is just messing with some people's brains it's uh yeah it's difficult to see that now as a part of reality as opposed to a part right. of right that's it yeah also the fact that the robots uh, are very precise and they're moving very very quickly it does not feel natural for us to for them to be precise at the speed that mm. they that they do i i can absolutely imagine the cgi looking more realistic than the real thing mm. Let's see if i can realistic find yeah of... yeah there's a sense of which it's more believable because it's sort of I don't know. It it fills in the gaps. I don't know. It's weird. It is weird. Let me but see. But I did listen to a uh, terrifying podcast about AI and military recently, and uh, yeah, the 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 drones that already exist, the drone swarms that already exist, that uh, can locate, decide what is a target, locate it itself. They just fly near the target and then small shape charge. You know, it's. Uh, oh, I thought you said what is a tiger. I was like, why are they hunting tigers? <laughs> no. Target, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, this is this is exactly where this is going to go. I'm not going to play this with sound because there, there's copyright issues, but like, um, the, the, I mean, this is just, um, it doesn't look real, does it? That looks like it's armatured in the same way that animation software is, like the sort of slightly, 
but that's this is real you know and it's it's completely independent it's not tethered to anything it's dancing better than i do which is the entire purpose of boston dynamics is to improve on, on pavel's ability to dance that's it um, but it's fascinating seeing the minute adjustments it's making in its arm uh, like for yeah. balance in its arms within the dance moves itself so you can see that it's not entirely pre-programmed it's making those minute little adjustments as it goes it's very cool yeah i mean human beings could not like could not solve that problem because you'd have to solve it for almost every step and every movement right so it's it's constantly mm. working it out which is just so cool the mm. dog is just amazing honestly those dark you can buy them now like um you can buy them for commercial use and they have a, like a bunch of different but it just it does look animated i know i can understand why people don't believe it but but again the dog, the dog is incredibly <laughs> fluid too versus the i the so ones. weird it might be because of the diffuse light and you cannot really see shadows that well because it's so bright maybe that that's also adds a little bit to the feeling of cgi i think also mm. what it partly is is that in some ways it is animated because like the the the, the robot's not been told to like not the robot's not listening to the music and coming up with its its routine mm. right so in some ways like there is somebody that's saying like you need to move here at this point in the track and like this is this is how it's synchronized so at some point somebody has actually animated it so maybe it's that lack of like natural fluidity i guess between the movements that makes it feel like it's cgi but yeah actually that's an interesting concept anyway the synchronicity i wonder is it just so reliably that it stays in sync or are they aware of each other's position or are they the really listening or... to the music yeah exactly yeah because yeah. the synchronicity actually is quite impressive it, it could you could very easily and like program it to be hearing the rhythm as well but i don't know it's interesting or there could be ir light cues that we can't see that are keeping it in time like that they yeah maybe there or something but yeah it's interesting yeah, it, it. I mean, that's the that's the tricky part, right? It's like once you start thinking. I mean, actually, that's something that DARPA was kind of been, has been working on for a while, thinking about a lot. Which is like, at one point, like it does make sense to have like humanoid machines because then they can operate in spaces designed for humans, right? The mm -hmm. door handles are at the right height, you know, doorways are the right size and shape, and things like that, you know. So there's it makes sense but then but then for other things where you can optimize it doesn't make sense for it to look like a human right just this is kind of one of those things about biology if we meet aliens in other worlds which is something i'm sure we'll talk about later um you know they're, they're very likely not to be humanoid you know it's it would be extremely unlikely in fact that i think that they're humanoid um <clears throat> there doesn't seem to be I anything should... uniquely special about this shape other than it happens to be the one we have I did hear like quite a positive uh, opinion on that, considering like that the tree, as we understand, has a. We don't have one tree. We have like thousands or millions of species that are we consider a tree, uh, and they evolved because there was uh, the same pressures. Uh, there's there's a good like if there's a, a another species that managed to leave the earth, it might be basically based on the same constraints. So I would expect them to be humanoid actually. I don't know. I, I think I think mm -hmm. trees have a common ancestor, right? So it's all about I, it's all about the starting point, right? So evolution works with where it's at and and goes and works out. Well, well essentially, it doesn't work anything out, but like, but you know, evolutionary pressure just weeds out things that aren't successful. So, well, yeah, but <clears throat> but okay. the point was just like that. They what's not successful quite often the same thing is successful over and over and over. In the same way, the shape of crocodile is yeah. quite a successful shape for many different species. But that's in the same environment. So it would assume uh, an, another planetary environment to be closer, identical to Earth, which who knows what kind of environments can produce life in the But universe. also, we, we know given, given the given the relative known quantity of the Earth's Earth as an environment, there are just billions of different species. Mm. And, you know, so we know even within that fixed point, like the, the, the level of diversity is huge. Um, but yeah, it's really interesting. I, I think I, sure. I personally think it would be extremely unlikely that we'll see humanoid shaped aliens. If we I think do the only in. difference would be the ridges on the forehead and the shape of the ears. <laughs> <laughs> um yes that's very likely that's it, it's very likely to be only very minor one might say cosmetic differences <laughs> <That's good. laughs> 
<laughs> awesome. Yeah, but anyway, I, I, I think I definitely think uh, the iPads. But also looking at the stuff from from uh, Boston. But you know, do you think it's going to be long before we see this kind of shit walking around, just like hanging out? Like, are we gonna are we gonna meet these in stores? Um, are they gonna be just well, getting the shopping for oh, for some old ladies? Soon? Yeah, I think that has to be very near future, especially for people with disabilities that can't get mm. to place, or you know, people that are blind or whatever. The, the struggle for somebody blind to get to and from the shops to grab a, you know, carton of milk or whatever it might be is just mm. immense. And if this robot minion can do it for them. Yeah. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know if humanoid, I suppose it would be optimal in the sense that we're used to looking for things that are around human height and all the rest of it. So if they're having to interact with the public, maybe it's better they're in humanoid form. But So yeah. in London, I've already just like seen it quite often of a robot uh, that's quite autumn, not fully autonomous, but it just basically a small robot with wheels that follows their owner with their shoppings inside. Oh, really? Mm. Uh, yep. Yeah, that's uh, like I've started seeing those things uh, like four years ago, and uh, they're not really that popular, but I definitely can see that sometimes that there's a small robot with the shopping site and it just follows the owner. Is it like a wheeled thing? Like it's not like yes, a it's wheeled thing. Yeah. It's not mm. any at, at any mm. point of level of the what we're seeing here. However, if this is already out there, I wouldn't. I would expect that the followers would be. Soon. The DARPA dog's not really, <clears throat> in the grand scheme of things, that expensive. You know, it, I mean, it, it's it's like you know, it's 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 expensive. Um, Hi, Chrisma. But yeah. Hey, Chrisma, how you doing? Oh, Boston Dynamics. Good evening. Good evening, Chrisma. Yes, indeed. Boston Dynamics. Um, the, yeah, you, the DARPA dog's not even that expensive, and you can buy it with a variety of different uh, arm attachments and things and configure it. But I, I think the base model is like, it's temptingly affordable. Like, you know, the, the pr price of a small house sort of thing, you know. But, <laughs> <laughs> In London? No, 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 no. Not. <laughs> <laughs> I think Elon Musk was like, should we build the Falcon Heavy or should I buy a flat in Mayfair? Like he had to make a decision. Like there was Um But yeah, this kind of stuff feels like the future to me. I love it. I really do. Uh we'll no doubt come back to the subject of of uh, aliens. Um uh, but uh, for now I think we're gonna chat about some films. Um because basically over Christmas I did fuck all but watch movies and <laughs> eat chocolate. Um, that was basically my Christmas period. Um, it was quite good. I don't know about you chaps. Did you have a similar comatose uh, Christmas? Unfortunately, no. I was working the whole Christmas because everyone at work was, had COVID, ah. which we not talk about. Which we're not talking about. <laughs> yeah, I was just working constantly. It's the busiest time of the year for me, the holidays. I live in a tourist town, so the opportunity to make money is when the tourists are here, which happens to be the Christmas holidays and New Year's. So. Right. Um, I was working flat out the entire time, but so yeah. basically you're all like, "Fuck you, Will." <laughs> <laughs> no, well, just we had different Christmases. <laughs> if, if it takes the edge off, I did sort of watch some really fucking terrible movies. Um, so, yes. I, I, don't, I, so we're going to talk about movies and anime uh, for a little bit, and then like in the next, in the sort of latter half of the show, we're going to talk about some philosophy stuff, I think, um, and maybe some broader sort of sciencey topics. But, but just just for the time being, we're going to talk about some movies. Um, so one I, what, one thing I will say is I've I've started to become very aware that Dune has ruined me for other films. Like it, it, Dune, Dune has set an unfortunately high bar in my opinion for for what I should be expecting from a cinema or a movie experience. And and I've not really had anything else that scratched that itch or got anywhere near that itch. Um and so I, I sort of am a bit annoyed at Dune because now it's like well I guess all movies are terrible now unless they meet Dune standards. Um, it turned out I really did like Dune. Um, and it really kind of, it was one of those movies that got under my skin a little bit, you know, started making me think about maybe I should read the books or like, you know, I can't wait for the next ones to come out. Yeah, I've heard a few people say that. Yeah, don't read the books. Like the books aren't that great. I mean, like I, I enjoyed in them tremendously. I liked reading them, but I cannot recommend them, unfortunately. It, it, it's what a play, what a movie out of that. The the books had amazing concept and ama everything amazing, but they're written very very unpleasant way. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're not the first person to say that. That the, some people really love them. I think if they come across the books really early, I think they they kind of formative childhood story, like gets them over perhaps the uh, the, the the wonky writing perhaps. But uh, yeah, and you're not the first person to say that. Yeah. But but in, but certainly in the movie anyway. I think the um uh, the, the the recent Gene movie definitely has set a high bar. Um, oh, the recent <clears> one. Okay, not David Lynch version. The recent one, not the David Lynch version. Yes, 
yes. In case that wasn't obvious. Um, <laughs> <laughs> good to clarify that now, just in case. Um, <laughs> that David Lynch movie is fucking batshit, though. I remember watching that when I was younger and just being like, I, I don't, I don't understand. Is this for me? Like, it's, it's in space, so that usually means it's for me, but then that... Whatever the fuck that evil Baron guy is, like, that is just disgusting. Like, that is really horrific. And also, what the hell is going on? Like, because it's just nuts. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Dune. But I watched... Uh, there's a movie, it turns out, I think we've all seen then. We, I, I watched Nobody, which is quite mm. interesting. What did you chaps think to Nobody? Oh, I, wait, I've, wait, I've got visual aids while you're doing that. I just realized I should be doing that. Do you have a picture uh, of Nobody? I have a picture of nobody. <laughs> yeah. It's I thought it was fine. It was entertaining. It was a very recycled idea. It's along the vein of many movies that have been done in this way. But uh yeah, Bob Odenkirk's always fun to watch in my opinion. I, I don't know. It was it was okay. Do you know Oh sorry, sorry, so, Joe. Oh no, go on. <laughs> Sure. Sorry, I, heard, I, I, heard, I heard my name, so I started talking. <laughs> it's a Pavlov. Pavlov's instinct. No, 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 we're not doing that. What did you think to nobody, Pavel? So, uh, unfortunately, I was disappointed. Uh, I do feel that the first John Wick scratched a certain itch that I didn't thought it exist, and I'm chasing that high even since. Uh, there are movies that are closer to that, uh, like Atomic Blonde or even uh, Extraction or, or Tripper Frontier. However, John Wick 2, John Wick 3 and Nobody, they looked like what I was looking for on trailers, but unfortunately it went into this more like, I'm fully aware that John Wick was not realistic, but those feels like feel like more magical action star instead of just like a bit more realistic. Yeah, mm. it was in a weird space. Early on, it feels like it's going to go into a sort of falling down sort of a space where the guy sort of has a bit of a breakdown and, and is, is justifiably, well, one might argue not justifiably, but, but certainly you can understand how he psychologically gets himself into this space. And then it sort of goes, well, no, it's going to be a bit more of a equalizer sort of thing, a bit more of a kind of, you know, former former special ops person sort of Avengers and I quite, I, you know, I, Denzel Washington's great in in those equal those Equalizer movies are fantastic. I think. I mean, they're real popcorn muncher action flicks, but they're bloody good for for what they are. Um, mm. And and so I was kind of okay with that. But then then it was like towards the latter half, it's like okay, it, it clearly wants to be John Wick. It clearly wants to be uh, Equalizer, and and it also seems well, to be a comic book movie. It's like, more or less a carbon um, copy of A History of Violence, right, with Viggo Mortensen. Yeah, which is a fantastic like, movie again, and not one mm. I would recommend. This, this completely lets that down. A History of Violence is fantastic. I love that movie. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so it's the same, same kind of vibe to it. But yeah. The last movie that came out on VHS. What was is, that? Is what? A History of Violence? Uh, yeah, History of Violence. Is that true? <laughs> yeah. Why the fuck do you know that? Because I have all useless knowledge that you have. <laughs> See, the thing is, I'm I know I'm like I don't I don't know that you know that. I'm I'm thinking to myself, I'm going to check that, and I know I'm not going to check that, right? So that's just, no. gonna, and then I'm probably going to repeat it at some point as well. And this is how this shit Factoids. gets started. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If anybody, if anybody in chat wants to check whether that's true, whether, whether the history of violence was the last movie ever to be produced on VHS, I would be interested. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah. I, I guess I gave the movie a lot of grace because I didn't have any expectations going in and I kind of expected it just to be a cheesy, who cares action movie. So it's, I didn't, yeah, I wouldn't necessarily recommend anybody to go out of the way to watch it, but I didn't find it offensively poor either. It was just a middle of the road. No, I, 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 I think that's true. It's it's definitely a like I would definitely see it as a Netflix movie. Like when it, when it comes to Netflix, like it's something to watch, and you'd be like, okay, that passed the time. Mm. You, you, exactly. it, yeah, but it it also felt like there were parts of it that were really good. Yeah, that the lead character was really good. You know, um, oh, who played? Uh, um, Doc from Back to the Future. I've completely forgotten his name, his real name. Yeah. Uh, yeah, as, as, the, as the dad. <clears throat> Trevor Lloyd. Is it Trevor Lloyd? Christopher. Christopher Lloyd, sorry. Yes. He was um, massively underused, <laughs> basically. Um, mm. As was, in fact, everybody that wasn't the main character. Um, 
Yeah, it's, it was a, it was a weird one. It was a weird one. Bit of a popcorn muncher, but yeah, what can you say? Yeah. Um, so I, I watched that, and then, and I don't really, and I think this was on Netflix, and I hadn't seen it, uh, and I and I thought I would give it two minutes worth of watching, and that is Bad Boys for Life, um, which I was oh as surprised. Yeah, I, I have no idea. I don't know why it's not coming up on this list of. Oh, it's a web P file, so I can't show it. Yeah, but ba Bad Boys for Life with Will Smith and I've forgotten the other guy's name. Um, Martin Lawrence, is it? Martin Lawrence, yeah. Yeah, Martin Lawrence. Um, that that was actually better than I thought it would be by a massive margin. Um, I'm not saying it's a great movie. It's not a great movie. But it, it's a lot better movie than I thought it was. I honestly thought I would turn it off like maybe 10 minutes in. Um, but actually, they played it really well. They did this sort of, you know, they're, they're getting really old now. Like, they, they played it straight. You know, they, they're getting really old. They're not at their prime. It, it's kind of nonsense. There was a lot of there was a lot of nonsense. But it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It's certainly better than a lot of the kind of trash movies. So what you're saying movies. is that you could empathize with the main characters or feel old. <laughs> getting old, yes. That's not thanks. being on top of the game. Thanks, Pavel. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, sadly, maybe not, that, that. not too far from the truth. I, I, I was quite I was quite impressed with it actually. I, I mean, it was just it is batshit, but like it was it was it was more of a. I, I get I, I think I enjoyed it more than I enjoyed Nobody, um, even though technically Nobody I think would be a movie I would be more likely to like, and Bad Boys for Life really wasn't. But yeah, I, I, it was kind of a, just odd to find myself not hating it immediately. Um, I would have curiosity. Have you have you seen uh, any of Fast and Furious movies? No, I've never watched the Fast and Furious. Because I would say it's like if you are in a certain frame of mind and you just like to want to watch something completely ridiculous, and I would say this movie was quite quite ridiculous in itself. Just w watch it in in the way that is like kind of not exactly intended, but in a way it can be enjoyed. Right. Uh, so I I had similar experience with a lot of Fast and Furious movies that that I watched right. uh, as watching right. as a, almost a parody of itself. Do I start at Fast and the Furious one? Is that where I start? And uh, no, I think you have to <laughs> because Fast and the Furious one was taking itself seriously. Right. I think you should start at like five or six. Oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> so, yeah. When they completely went off the rails. <laughs> okay. I find it so difficult to bother to watch these sort of movie reboots of old it just feels like the laziest cash grab ever and i'm not sure i want to contribute to that so oh, you, you i mean... tend to avoid things like bad boys and that's yeah sort of no and and i i i would have i don't i i couldn't exactly tell you what it, i think it's because i just watched nobody and then i think i actually did go and watch the equalizer movies again because i was like yeah that mm. reminded me of them and i remember really liking them and i watched them back and i was like yeah i really i, I think the equalizer too especially like the cinematography at the end of, of that movie is fun phenomenal um but but the um yeah yeah i just I, I watched bad boys too and and was so surprised upon i didn't hate it i guess that there's not much more to say about it than that. yeah that's fair that's fair. Um, this one was really weird uh this is uh no time to die the the new james bond movie yeah have you guys seen this i have yeah have you seen this Pavel? You haven't no, seen I it. haven't yet. Uh, although I heard that it was better than expected, so. Hmm. What do you think, Jay? Uh, I yeah. I I think if I was in the editing room, I would have let left a, at least forty-five minutes more on the cutting floor. Um, yeah. I, I just. Yeah, again, this theme of pacing where it's no longer a good movie or an epic movie unless it's just the most drawn out slow thing with long panning camera shots. I mean, it it just feels unnecessary so often in movies these days, but it's like there's, there seems to be this, that's the standard if you want a movie to be an epic, so we need to edit it in that way. And a Bond film especially just feels like, you know, it, is that really necessary for it? Yeah, just, it just felt very padded by the end. I was like, goodness gracious, how long has this movie been going for? <laughs> like, that's sort of the feeling I felt like. But, but um, isn't yeah. this, is it the same? Because I haven't watched the movie, but I've seen the, all the other Daniel Craig's, Craig's ones and they all feel like very, very much padded, including my favorite mm. one, Casino Royale. It just wouldn't stop. Uh, would you say it's padded in the same way or is it? Mm. Uh, I found Casino to be far more engaging and entertaining than this one. There's definitely a style shift here, and I appreciated, I don't know, I, pre I definitely appreciated parts of it. Um, 
you know, the action was totally on par. It was, it was exactly what you would expect from a Bond movie. Let me say that much. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm driving to the theater. I'm thinking, what am I going to see today? I'm going to see car chase. I'm going to see someone on a motorcycle running away from something. There's going to be a helicopter chasing a car. You know, I rattled it all off and sure enough, there's all of that in the movie. So if you're expecting a Bond film, you're going to get it. I just felt like it could have been so heavily edited down this one and in a different way to Casino and other, other ways. Those, those movies at least kept the pace rolling along that, uh, I thought was fine, but this one, ah, the pacing just felt so drawn out for no reason whatsoever. So, yeah. I think I think I think the promise of Casino Royale was badly let down increasingly by every subsequent movie. Um, that mm. there was the, the 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 charm of Casino Royale was partly that you know Bond was this kind of brute force, blunt object, like he wasn't particularly sophisticated, and the there wasn't much in the way of tech gadgetry in, in, in Casino Royale. It was just, there was that one bit with the car that had the magic defibrillator and could, could analyze his poison and bring him back to life again, which, you know, okay, get a pass on that. It's got to be at least something, but mostly Casino Royale was fairly straight. It was a sort of casino, you know, action adventure movie, you know, like it, it was good. I enjoyed it. And it said good things about the grittiness of the of what they were trying to set up, but mm-hmm. as as it went on, it just became increasingly embroiled in this fucking bullshit Spectre plot that never really made any sense. That no, that none of the big important characters in that Spectre narrative ever made re- real connections with. You know, I would I would be, you know, it, it would have been way better, I think, if they'd have abandoned Spectre as a concept altogether. This the whole idea that he has to be fighting this world you know controlling evil organization uh, you know it's just it's absurd it's comic book and it, and it didn't need it it would be mm. mu- i think it would have been a much better conceptual series of films if they'd have just gone for ink sort of one and done movies um essentially but they they didn't they wanted to tie it together in this kind of arcing thread of bullshit um which made it just really confusing in a lot of places and Largely, it was confusing because things that the movie was asking you to remember, it turned out weren't that memorable, um, which is kind of a sort of a damning, damning indictment on the previous films. I do, yeah. I do think that the, um, I understand that they actually re. It was there was a big pitch uh, for it being quite a woke movie, in as much as there were a lot of very woke lines of dialogue. Um, the, the strong female characters were were much more um, abrasive, um, and apparently yeah. there was there was a pre screening where it just it burst into flames and people just outright hated it because of this sort of heavy handed woke culture stuff, and then they re edited it to to pull that shit back basically. And what I will mm. say is I really liked the female characters for the most part. I wasn't sure I didn't like the new 007 character. Um, no. I she she was just incredibly unlikable. Like there mm-hmm. was just no reason to be interested in her or enthusiastic about her. They just didn't give her anything to like, except that she was just as good as Bond in every possible way, maybe better. That's not a character, right? That's not mm. that that's that's just not a character, and it's a real shame they didn't give her some either preamble or some some kind of you know just a bit of the movie to to to, to find her character in a, in a in an interesting way but she she was just this kind of silly thing i think but that <clears throat> that sort of similarly ham-fisted to the whole women in power thing i mean you look at a show like the expanse where mm. you know they so artfully diffused race and gender and everything that you don't even notice it there's just it's just so brilliantly done that that is how you do it in an incredibly exactly. artful brilliant way and this movie could be the polar opposite of that it's like here's the most ham-fisted way to ram these issues down your throat and uh so that's that, what they that did character <clears throat> was, yeah, yeah. So that that is exactly what they did and apparently they the re-edit basically brought it back from the brink yeah the expanse mm-hmm. is the go-to reference there i i there, there yeah. is nothing bad about the way they use uh, gender and, and, and racial diversity in that movie that ever mm. feels like this. Forced. these characters are here yeah. because of their gender, not because of anything yeah. else about their personality or their narrative within the wider story. Yeah, mm. it was It was really, I, I felt really bad because I really liked Daniel Craig as Bond. I thought he was a good Bond and I just think that the movies increasingly let him down. Um, I also totally agree, yeah, at least 45 minutes uh, could have been chopped off. Um, 
Mm. There, there were whole sequences where we were like, okay, so what are we doing now? Okay, why? <laughs> are we well, here, are we? Okay, well. <laughs> it, I mean, no, no spoilers, but one of the final scenes is just people sitting around in a room mm. for 15 minutes reflecting on something that just doesn't need to be reflected on. It's like, what is this scene? Why is it 15 minutes long? I just think, like, oh. Yeah. By that time, I'd been sitting there for, you know, two and a half hours. And I'm like, okay, can I leave now? Like, come on, give me a break. The, the, uh. the, the bad guys are not sufficiently interesting, and that's the problem. And like, their yeah. their principal menace is that apparently they're so very rich and they're part of some global super conspiracy. But yeah, I, I don't know. It, it was very disappointing. I thought, and, and a lot of people's that I've heard that thing that people have said that you say, Pavel, which is that you know it was better than they expected it to be. I I, I can only I, I I wonder if that's largely because that the original trailer was was of that woke version of it and there were apparently quite a few lines of that in that dialogue in that trailer that really put people's backs up um and and yeah maybe maybe they maybe it's because of they pulled it back from the brink that people said it was better than they thought but i i, I don't know so that will be interesting <laughs> because i do plan to watch this movie at some point and it mm. will be my tiebreaker over uh daniel craig daniel craig bond in the end as there's two movies that i can't watch and two movies that I kind of enjoyed. So we'll see. Yeah. 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 I, I just wonder what people's expectations are going in. Cause I mean, it certainly meets them in terms of the f formula of a bond movie. As you say, the whole largest grander conspiracy stuff is annoying and useless, but that's not really part of the bond. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, it, it, it ticks all the boxes of what a bond movie is going to have in it. But yeah, overall, the, so there was a jetpack scene <laughs> not, not quite but it's almost like that it, but when it says ticks all the boxes it's just like it is methodically going through the list yeah it's, it's not ticking the boxes oh it's got all of the stuff you'd expect it's like no they've literally gone <laughs> you know, what is yeah. in this mm -hmm. um so let, let's talk about uh another movie uh i'm trying to think which one to go to next so i watched well, kind of on the back of Bad Boys, I'm going to give a quick shout out to Hot Fuzz. So uh -huh. I, uh, <laughs> after, uh, after watching all these action movies, I was like, I, I, it just gave me the, it just reminded me of those scenes. And I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going to go watch Hot Fuzz. And I swear to God, this movie really fucking holds up. It's a really good movie. Like yes. I am, I'm very lukewarm on the, uh, the third one of their Cornetto trilogy, the, um, what's it called? The World's End. Um, there were two movies that sounded exactly the same at the at the time, and both of them were shit. So <laughs> it's hard for me to remember. There was one with Emma Watson and uh, James Franco and Seth Rogen and all, all of them, comedy. So and there was this one, and both fun. of them were shit. Yeah, yeah. Um, so so yes, that 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 movie I wasn't so good at, but Hot Fuzz and Shaun of the Dead definitely hold up. And and I think Hot mm -hmm. Fuzz is just, I, it's best I, Kate Blanchett I'm, movie ever. <laughs> it's it's just this but i'm sorry i have to rebut that because it's it's stupid but the humor is incredibly intelligent so is the editing smart. like this is humor this, this is brilliant this is humor that brilliantly uses the strengths and the unique art form that is cinema i mean the way when he leaves the city and is and traveling to the <laughs> to the countryside the non-expositional editing of that scene is so brilliant. Like the cell phone, yeah, the it, cell phone it's, signal it's, ticking down yeah, is it's, just it's, gorgeous. It's such a good movie. So well made. Very clever. It, it <laughs> is. It is beautiful, and and it, it, I think it's such a great British classic as well. Like we don't we don't sit. I, I don't feel proud of many British movies these days. They're all gritty as fuck and all. And 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 this one really sort of harkened back to the sort of almost. <laughs> sort of uh, Miss Marple days of kind of countryside village murder mystery events. And it's just like, and at the same time, it's got this ridiculous Michael Bay, like overtones. <laughs> <Yeah. test. laughs> if, if you, if you, if you are hearing this and for some reason have not watched Hot Fuzz, I go, I, go and watch yeah, it right that, now. That's a Drop hard recommendation. From, the, from watching this, yeah, go stop. watch Hot Fuzz. It's better <laughs> than this. It's straight up on Netflix right now. Yeah. It's better than this. Um, Right, let's talk about let's talk about this Ghostbusters Afterlife, uh, which I understand is probably the newer of the movies uh, on this list. Um, so I was kind of surprised this came out on Amazon to buy, um, I think at the beginning of last week or this week, um, 
Oh, it must have been last week. Um, or end of last week. Anyway, at some point in the last week. It I was kind of looking forward to watching it. I was really excited about it when I heard about it. Um it, it, it definitely seemed to be uh kind of yeah, forget Ghostbusters twenty sixteen. We we kind of we, we know we hear you like but we want to do a good one, so you know, give us another chance. Um it's still by the have you watched two thousand sixteen ones? I, I actually have watched Ghostbusters twenty sixteen. I have. Would you um, recommend it? I would not recommend it, no. I would not recommend okay. it to anybody for then any reason. It. It, it's not even mm. worth watching ironically. It's it's just Yeah. Like the, the, there are bad movies like The Room that I would almost recommend people watch, right? Because they're just fascinating insights into the culture of a, a very strange man in the case of the room. <laughs> but 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 Ghostbusters 2016 is not even it, it's just a bad movie in every metric. It's so it's 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 so bad it's not even interesting. You know, that mm. that's that's really weird. So I was kind of excited about Ghostbusters Afterlife. Obviously it's the son of the original director. It's um clearly the, the trailer came out the tone was beautiful like in the trailer. I'm not going to spoil anything. Um I was kind of disappointed is what I'm going to say here. But that's all I'm going to say. Like it, it's not in. It's a not a bad movie, and I would say certainly the first thirty to to sixty percent somewhere around there. Like that that part of the movie I really liked. Um, it just the last half of it felt like they were rushing or going through the motions, which is a slightly disappointing. Like it felt too much like a cookie cutter, rinse and repeat of the original Ghostbusters movie um in a way that it really didn't need to to do um and it felt really disappointing the the young cast were really good but for the most part half of them just never had anything to do in the movie like it it the, the cast could have been half as large and they could have done everything better um which is weird because they've got some good you know they've got they, there was nothing wrong with any of the performances that you know they were they were good actors they just you know the the Finn Wolfhart character kid from stranger things is in here um and, and he's got nothing to do in the movie nothing ever happens to him like he's he's it's it's just weird like it's like he's there for brand recognition like name recognition only um you know there's a sort of weird plot between him and another character who also doesn't matter at all um and yeah there's just it's just it just feels really light on story in a weird way do you think that it maybe it's because they wanted to avoid what happened to Bond and having a 15 minute uh, scene near the end when they discuss all the ghosts and busting them. <laughs> no, I I think it, I I don't really understand why the pacing of the movie is the way it is. I I I my my genuine suspicion is that they were so scared of the reaction to 2016 that they felt that all they could really do was was create something that was new enough in setting but essentially redo the same the first movie again um that that's how safe they played it um i mean like if you look at the hollywood on uh, all over the movies what movies came out it was ghostbusters spider-man matrix james bond yeah 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 it hmm. kind of seems like a bit of a theme we are doing things that people already seen it's all it's always cheaper to make another one right because you know you, you can save a hell of a lot of marketing you know people know what that movie is right you know what whether you're going to like it or not like is irrelevant you but you, you you know you know what you need to know about the new matrix movie right before you go and watch it um mm -hmm. and that that that's a that's a good and a bad thing but yeah ghostbusters afterlife um i just felt a little bit disappointed i think um it's it's certainly not anything near the 2016 debacle, and I'm I'm hoping that it might give way to the kinds of movies that we were hoping for. It certainly hinted at that it, it knew the kind of movie we were looking for, um, and it it did some heavy-handed and ham-fisted things, and some of them worked better than others. But um, it, the the parts that were disappointing were the parts where it was too closely playing homage to the original movie. That that's where it let itself down, in my view. But um, I would recommend it. I would recommend seeing it, but I wouldn't recommend paying a lot of money for it. I would I would definitely wait for it to come out on Netflix and, and what have you and, and watching it that way, um, unless you're a super huge fan. Um, but yeah, yeah, it was it was I was kind of yeah disappointed, I guess. Um, so what else is there on our list of things to talk about? Oh, let's talk about this guy, right? 
here's a here's a movie here's a movie that has every reason to be a whole heaping steaming pile of hot garbage right it's a video <laughs> game based movie that wasn't really based on a video game but kind of sort of was <laughs> um it was a light-hearted comedy of the sort that just seems to spew out generic garbage it's there's just no reason for this movie to be any good what did you what did ryan you think reynolds, to it? very surprisingly playing ryan reynolds R <laughs> ryan reynolds continuing to be ryan reynolds yeah yeah indeed yes well i'll give i'll give you the, i'll give it this right there there were two reasons for this movie to be good one i i gotta say it, ryan reynolds right the, the 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 man the man the man has rarely let us down since th that movie which shall not be mentioned <laughs> i really liked that movie when it came out i really liked it well, i'm sorry buddy you can't you can't apologize enough for that um, and the, the other thing that's really that's that's really a, a reason why I might have hope for this is like I will literally watch anything that has Taiko Waititi involved in it in any way whatsoever. Um, mm -hmm. You know I, that that's just a given. So so those two things it had going for it, but that is not enough to carry what is clearly going to be a CGI video game reference bullshit fest. It's 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 got everything about it is going to be a bad movie. What did you think about it, Pavel? I'm basically kind of the, the same. I loved the trailers. I thought the trailers look amazing. I expected the movie to be absolute stinking pile of, we you know what, but uh, I did love it. And in the end, it's like Taika Waititi. <laughs> yeah. uh, the only thing that I was really wondering is whether they had a talks with Rockstar at some point to get the branding of Grand Theft Auto or not. Yeah. And... Uh, the interesting thing for me is that I all the cheesy things that you know are coming and are anticipating before the characters even say it, they do come and they do say exactly what you're expecting. But somehow it's not really cringy either. It's it's I don't know. It, it somehow pulled off to be exactly what you're expecting, and I was expecting garbage. But then to just do these things in a way that wasn't really cringy and make it through and just be a fun, entertaining movie. Uh, yeah. I, 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 I just straight enjoyed this film. Like it was mm -hmm. just a fun movie. Yeah. Um, there there were it. definitely slower parts to it, but yeah, like it, yeah. it was great. Like there, there was one moment where um, I, 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 it's a minor spoiler, but I don't think it will spoil anything because when it happens, it's just the nature of it. But the, 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 the lightsaber scene, um, uh, that 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 moment just was like oh come on all right yeah. fine fuck this whatever yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, I, I think i realized that i like the movie the moment when i was like thinking how the game actually works how the admin how the admins like interact with the world of the game how the world interacts with the game yeah. i realized it makes no sense and i didn't care <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah i was absolutely okay exactly realizing I'm trying to imagine what is actually happened in real life with person in front of a computer. This doesn't make sense. Still love it. And it yeah. even managed <laughs> to land its heavy-handed romance plot as well, right? It, it even mm. managed to land that, which actually, yeah, it, it because it because it ended up being quite sweet as opposed to mushy. Um, yeah, exactly. It, it was and and like honestly, Taika Waititi. Uh, he could have been in it for like another eighty percent of the movie. Could have just been him being just this evil fucking CEO asshole, and I would have just continued to watch that all day. He's he's just brilliant. I just can't. I don't know what it is about him. It's his pacing, his timing. Like I I, I can't explain it, but he's so fucking great. I, I've I, ever since uh, what we do in the shadows. Um, you know, he's been on my radar. Um. And just everything he's done since has been phenomenal. The fact that he did, he actually made a, a Thor movie um, that was just fantastic is just un, un, unreal to me. Like, <laughs> a Thor movie is the only reason why I ever care about MCU or anything. It's just yeah. like I was out and it roped me back again a little bit because. <laughs> yeah, I'm exactly. Out again. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was kind of like really losing a lot of interest in these movies, but. It it was the it was the first time one of those movies felt creative, you know that whole eighties vibe, that whole and those those beautiful like uh, semi still like model likes sort of stop 
frozen motion uh, shots that he would do with the Valkyrie, Valkyries coming down and then there would be those things where there's sort of piles of bodies and guys leaping and then it would sort of freeze and move around it almost Matrix style. It was just, but it was just gorgeous. You know, like the <laughs> whole thing was just like, yeah, this is fucking fun in capital yeah. letters, you know, like, and and I'm as a result, I'm I'm kind of down for Love and Thunder, which I think is his next one because that he's doing that one as well now. I think I think everybody's just gone. Yeah, this guy should keep doing these movies. It turns out he's pretty good at them. So yeah, Free Guy with Ryan Reynolds, and and honestly, the the closest thing I could give an example to this is honestly De- Detective Pikachu, which also has no right to be as good as it is, and also is a lot is is largely watchable because of ryan reynolds like the, the detective pikachu, pikachu movies plot is kind of bobbins right in 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 like a very gratuitous way but it it is shot brilliantly and frankly ryan Ren- reynolds carries that movie i really feel like ryan reynolds for me is the opposite of ryan gosling <laughs> <laughs> please explain Be- because i can barely stand ryan gosling on the screen I don't think he's a great actor, but every single movie that Ryan Gosling was in, I loved it. And I think the real hero is the agent of Ryan, Ryan Gosling that gets him the roles in the, all those amazing movies. And <laughs> if I see Ryan Gosling movie, yeah, I'm going to watch it because I know I will enjoy the movie. However, when I go to Ryan Reynolds, the movie be completely stinking pile of shit. Uh, Green Lantern. <laughs> For Let's forget about Green Lantern. Uh, but I will enjoy enjoy the the movie with him because of his charisma alone. I mean, yeah. the, the, there there is more. I mean, he 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 kept getting pigeonholed as this kind of like hot hot guy, right? He was he was the go to love interest for a while in a lot of cheap shitty romances. He he nobody was really taking him that seriously. Um, you know, he really clearly genuinely loves comic books. He loves Deadpool as a character. Clearly mm. did what he needed to do to get on to the X-Men movie. Didn't work <laughs> out. DC movie <laughs> didn't work out. <laughs> but also, and then someone leaked the uh, and then, test yeah, footage. Whoever that was. He must, he, been, he must have been devastated when it happened. He, he claims he forgot which one of them did it. But anyway, yeah, he, he basically, uh, he shouldn't be watchable. Like it's it's he it is basically Ryan Reynolds in all of the movies, right? It shouldn't be. It's like it's like the when when um, who's the guy? Who's the Ace Ventura guy? Um, Jim Carrey. Jim, Jim Carrey, Carrey, right? Where, where it was just like, okay, do 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 the Jim Carrey thing, right? It was like do 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 the Ryan Reynolds, do do the quip, do do the uh, do the uh, outtake cut, you know, do the do the off the line cuff line, and, and yet at the same time, somehow it's still actually really coherently watchable like i he's, i think he he's way smarter at his, the, his understanding his own character um than i think a lot of other actors of this sort have been um and and yeah he's picking some good movies i guess or so making last, some good movies so the last year i think it's like it's the first two first year ever that we had two movies based on video games because three guys gta uh, that are actually good so which like we had sonic that was really with Jim Carrey. I never really... saw I never saw Sonic, but I did hear Jim Carrey was actually really good in in, in Sonic. Yeah, uh, it was a Jim Carrey movie. It was Robotnik and Sonic. Gotcha. Uh, but we had two like genuinely good movies that are based on video games, which feels like bizarre land. Speaking of good things based on video games, that will be the the year's best segue, right? So I've peaked too early. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I watched all of The Witcher uh, season two. Have you seen this, Pavel? I was in the. Uh, I've seen the season one. Uh, I haven't seen season two yet. Uh, I heard horrible things about it. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. I've only really you... watched uh, <sighs> two episodes of the second season, so. Okay. No spoilers. Um, so to, just to, like. So he I've dies. Read, uh, Witcher. Right? <laughs> I've read Witcher when I was like a teenager. All my friends were uh, read Witcher when we were teenagers because we were the OGs, poor right. people. Right. Uh, and all <laughs> OGs, my friends hated. Surely. They they hated the books. No, they loved the books. They, oh, they hated, hated the this. Yeah. So I I really loved the first season. I thought that first season was pretty pretty special. I did not hate this second season. I I thought it was. It was okay. Um, it wasn't bad. It was just not as good, nearly as good as the first one. And I understand that they've taken a bit of a 
departure from the books, um, which I can imagine annoyed a lot of people, because it, it does seem like it seems like not much really happens in this season, and there's a lot of there's a lot of excuse me, I've got I've got hiccups, which is not great for on stream. Um, Should we take a quick break? No, I, I, yeah, we will do in a second. But uh, um, let me get The Witcher three out of my system. That's that's more important. The wit The Witcher. Sorry, have you played, have you played The Witcher? <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I've mentioned it, but I have. Yeah. Um, I I th I think it was really weird. I wonder if if you know. COVID, for example, like, I wonder if that's had an impact on the way they were telling the story, because like, it really did feel they were stringing out scenes that didn't need to be strung out. Like it felt like they, they weren't, they, there was there's definitely more story they could have told in the space they had available. And they seemed to, they seemed to have just not done that. Um, I thought the Siri, who was a character, I, who was an actress who, whose performance I really didn't like in the first season definitely seems to have gotten better like she's grown up like a shit ton i mean she seems like four times the size of her she, wish. She, she didn't have anything to play with really in a season one apart from being like confused and out fish out of water it's true yeah. it's true um and it's nice to see that there that she's she's She's, she's a lot better in this one. I think. She she grew up so much that in the initial scenes of episode one, I was like, "Is this the same actor?" <laughs> yeah. I to, uh, huh? Oh. It, she just looks so different. But yeah, just like Come. police officers. I was a bit <laughs> I was a bit saddened to see I was a bit saddened to see that they'd sort of one of the things that was quite good about the first one, and one of the things I liked about the original books was its kind of um serialized sort of nature like they were telling little isolated stories like and and the clever thing about it was that you know the, the nature of time in the original book was kind of confused deliberately because you know you kind of get a sense that these these aren't necessarily being told in sequential order and you don't really know how old Geralt is at any given point so that some one of these stories could have been a hundred years ago you know the 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 next story could have been last Wednesday it doesn't you know it's sort of is it's the it's the, the sort of chronicles of Geralt which is quite good and I like that and it's it's a shame and I don't know why TV I suspect it's just easier to be to be honest with you but I I and I'm not sure why but TV doesn't seem to be wanting to tell these little micro stories anymore. You like you remember Star Trek, where Star Trek used to be every every episode they'd beam down to a different planet and some weird shit would go on, and you know they'd have to remodulate the dilithium crystals and then they'd fuck off somewhere else. You know they're just not making stories like this anymore. They're just telling these kind of everything's got to be part of a science fiction epic, and everything's interconnected and it's all part of the mm. next week's story. And it's just I really wish The Witcher. The, the one story that they tell at the beginning, the, the, the sort of Beauty and the Beast pastiche, um, is is kind of is kind of interesting. And I liked that story, but it, it's told very differently in the original books. And it's part of just one of these one and done stories. And when I yeah. saw that, I was like, I really like that. And it's actually one of the, my favorite episodes of season two, because it is this little isolated story. But they didn't do enough with it because they were too busy going on about shit that was long form storytelling that mm, wasn't relevant. It's Mm. It's so funny you bring that up. I had this conversation just recently with a friend. I'm I'm watching a, a old anime series right now called Monster. It's like a psychological thriller, and it so brilliantly does that thing that old episodics would do, where they bring in a character for just one or two episodes, and they encapsulate this character so well in a beautiful little side story that the character has its own arc it's separate from the main story it tells a really human story you know all those things it used to be so common and and going back to these older shows shows me that and you are yeah. right so many new things just seem to be devoid of it but it's such a brilliant aside you know you get to tell a human aspect that might not be in the main story and i, I think yeah I, I do miss that from series for sure Oh, so can I just say hello to Rufflekins? I hope I'm pronouncing that no. right in the chat. I can say that, and I will, and did say that. <laughs> First time chatter. Nice to see you, Rufflekins. Uh, also, your name is awesome. Hopefully, I pronounced it right. Um, I yeah. I, I mean, I'm. I was. A, I, I mentioned this many, many times in previous things that I've done with, and I'm sure Pavel's heard. But I used to be a huge fan of the old original Twilight Zone. You know, to me, that the Twilight Zone wasn't even didn't even have the same characters episode by episode. They were always these little vignette stories um, that were just interesting enough. They didn't they didn't have to make sense for an entire eighteen season arc, right? They just had to make sense for the duration of one episode to make that fun to watch. And and so the, 
Yep. So there is a show like that right now, uh, Love, Death, and Robots. You wanna, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Which, yes. which everyone loved, and apparently there's a there are people who want to watch shows like that, and there there are, but they're they're harder to make, I suspect. But but it, you know, Love, Love, Death, and Robots is a deliberate homage to the the um, heavy metal um, magazine, like the the the, the adult sort of mature fiction i guess um you know uh magazine that came out in america which was based on metal hurling which was the french magazine but but they were all these like ser they basically would have different comic book authors write these little one set stories there's one and done stories from so you'd have all these different artists and all these different uh, authors creating these little mini stories and then they would just collate them into this one magazine and and i i could never really understand when it was good and not just about TNA. Um, when it was actually good, I couldn't believe that you were able to get all these amazing stories in this one little magazine. It was just, it felt like a ridiculous uh, value for money. Um, I have to say, I've had trauma about that watch? magazine. <clears throat> sorry. Oh, sorry. sorry. <laughs> I was just asking, did you both watch Love, Death and Robots? Or? Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 season two wasn't as good, but season one was, mm. was, was definitely fantastic. The quality of this, some of the... CGI in there is just insane. Unreal. Like the the Russian one is uh, oh. whoa, absolutely ridiculous. I don't think I've ever seen something at that level of quality of of uh, CGI. And they, and anyway. they did it. They did it by going to companies that made trailers for video games. They did. They didn't go to these big animation houses. They go to these like rough and ready like houses that make these kind of very cinematic. When I say rough and ready, but they're using like game tech to to build these things rather than like full i don't know pixar animation studio type deals where you know it's obviously going to be a much more involved process but oh my god the level of variety in those things is just unreal like and and that might or might not be a pun i'm not sure um but but, it, but it, it's certainly <laughs> phenomenal um and if we're going to talk about that then i think we should also then talk about uh arcane because uh have i got a little thing for arcane they'll add a little picture for arcane i don't I don't have a picture for Arcane. Mm. Damn it. I was doing so well for little pictures. But... Just imagine that this is Arcane. Yeah, imagine this is Arcane. <laughs> so Arcane, what did you guys think to it? How I, I, I'm just gonna let you know I've only watched like I think four episodes, I think. I got I got four episodes in and then I stopped. What did you guys think? Um I really like the art style. I think it's really awesome. I like the animation. The story is predictable family issues story and class struggles there's nothing new there i don't it's not odious or anything because it's predictable but <clears throat> when you say class yeah. do you mean like healer tank dps <laughs> or see what you do <laughs> yes no um Sorry <clears throat> societal classes <laughs> um yeah, I, I don't know. I was I, I enjoyed it. I think I really liked the performances from the voice actors. I thought that was, um, yeah, I thought there were some really excellent performances. I'd say four that I thought were quite good. Um, but yeah, what did you think, Pell? So I actually haven't watched Arcane. Uh, ah. uh, it's like I, I haven't played. I, so I've been told to actually to watch it because it's quite good, according mm. to the people. Uh, yeah. But I haven't played League of Legends or Dota that much, so I assume that was. And I'm not familiar with the lore. Actually, was not yeah. familiar with the fact that there's a lore to League I of Legends. I haven't played even one minute of League, so and it didn't detract at all. I think from my experience. So, yeah. Um, yeah. I. I. I firstly, I. I. The, there's nothing. I, I could. I could imagine anybody would have to say against the art style. The art is just phenomenal. The animation style is just. And, and it, so good. I, you know, I, I'd, 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 I, I would almost be to the point of saying I could watch anything in that art style because it, it's just, it is just brilliant. Um, Arc Arcane, uh, not Arcane. Is it Arcane Studios? The, the guys who do Dishonored, right? Like those are the people they brought on to do this animation. It is. Yeah, but it's spelled differently, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it is Arcane yeah. Studios, isn't it? Um, the, those the French mob, right? Ruffigan says the animation is stunning. Yes, they are a French mob. That's true. Um, mm. They, it, it, it is. It's absolutely phenomenal. Like I, I, I was just like, this is just gorgeous, and they need to make more things. 
clearly because because it, it has that beautiful like semi-painted aesthetic but it doesn't have yeah. that weird unpleasant thing when when that's been tried before you get this weird warping effect of the of the models as they're stretching the textures are kind of stretching i've seen them people try to do that painted 3d model animation effect before and it, it always looks just wonky i don't know mm. how they make it not look wonky i suspect they just put shit tons of effort into it because there's there's just detail everywhere in every single yeah. scene and it's just beautifully lit and it's just beautifully it's just dripping with style like the world the world building through purely the animation is fantastic uh, it, it reminds yeah. me of ghibli actually like the, there's something there's something about the way it sets its scenes and, and it sets its environments that kind of seems ghibli-esque i think um I also really liked, I don't know what you thought about it, but the style of one of the characters, you know, spoilers sort of is descending into madness a little bit. And when they're having their moments of, of madness, they, they put this like 2d hand drawn animation style over the top of the existing style. And I thought that meshed together so well and looked so awesome. I, I was really impressed by that. Uh, and uh, I hadn't it, seen that too many other places. In, but, in a weird yeah. way, I would describe it as theatrical. And, and and not to not to mean like this is a classic standard theater move, but it's almost playing with the medium like theater would. Like it's 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 usurping expectations. It's using mm. the nature of the form to actually tell the story. And I just think it's and I, and I think that's the right mindset, right? Not not to say this is the look, right? It's it's actually saying like, how do we convey storytelling through th through through our presentation, our aesthetic? Yeah. The, Here's the our thing, toolbox. <clears throat> what are the different tools we can use? What to can we do? Something? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And well, and I think that's great. So no, that's fascinating because uh, I only noticed it <clears throat> to be done in only one other uh, one other movie, and that was um, Spider Man into the Spider Verse when they were playing with the frame rate, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the level of confidence of the main character. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's that, uh, interesting. That's fascinating. Uh, <laughs> that at the beginning, the uh, movie is definitely, you see that it's quite choppy. And when Miles Morales comes into its, spoilers, uh, into into its own, it becomes like really, really smooth. Uh, so ah. it's like the, using the medium and actually to play with, play with, play with it. Uh, I might actually watch, them, watch the Arcane just for that. <laughs> I think yeah. Arcane's worth watching just for the aesthetic. And the, the reason I stopped watching it was that, and, and this is this is one that's really gotten me, is like I, I couldn't tell whether my woke detector was just oversensitive <laughs> or it, it just felt like every male character was an idiot, was either evil or an idiot or like, or you know, brute force slab of meat. And all of the female characters were very clever very cunning, very sophisticated, very intelligent, superior, and stronger. And and I I I can't work out anymore whether or not this is just. Well, maybe I'm just massively sexist now. But it, I didn't it, think you said that he man is woke. It didn't. It didn't. I didn't sense that at all. That's really I wasn't interesting. Looking for it either. So it's really interesting. And I and this is but one the, of the things. Is the, like has, one of the male characters is like the he's well. I don't know. Maybe he didn't get far enough. But he's definitely the strongest most hopeful most intelligent character in the whole thing i think but yeah maybe i, maybe I didn't get I, far I, enough yeah. i i i got yeah. a couple i maybe it wasn't four episodes maybe it was three but like i i, I mean i i love the bits of the beginning i like the you know the whole idea of the sort of sewer rat the kids on the streets and things and like there was some quite poignant little bits of storytelling but there was just it, it just started to and again i don't know if i'm noticing it because i'm oversensitive to it that may well be the case right it, it's unfortunate if you're looking for it all the time you're, you're gonna, gonna find, find it, it everywhere yeah. there's very few things that can totally remove it as artfully as uh the expanse can but would you say that's some kind of everywhere you'll find it sorry would you say that some kind of trigger warning for wokeness uh, would be in a uh, good idea <laughs> No, I, I think I think people should just make good stories with good characters, and I, I, I it it doesn't it doesn't matter. It, again, though, it felt like a lot of the female characters at the beginning, like their character was purely defined by like very limited traits, and and I, and a part of that may very well be that they're based on 
video game characters that don't that only have the highest level of superficial storytelling sort of done in terms of mm. their backgrounds and things and, and yeah. this is all spitballing so maybe the i guess two if you're searching i i find it, it, it if you're searching if you're expecting everything to be a masterpiece in, in storytelling and character building and everything yeah you're almost guaranteed to be bound for disappointment i kind of went into That's this true. thing not knowing anything and just <laughs> just went in blank but i will say to anyone that's interested in watching it the first two episodes are quite slow but or not slow they're just not that engaging mm. but it's definitely worth persisting through because it it changes in tone and pace and everything very very might, rapidly might, after that point. i might well give it a go on that basis so, then if, if it yeah. sounds it sounds like i need to get more into it um part honestly I, part of my woke sensitivity has got to be frankly that i've just learned that netflix is just so heavy-handed with this stuff in a lot of this material it's put down a lot of the things that i was really excited to watch they have really heavy-handedly approached these topics and 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 i don't think netflix has ever done anything as elegant as the expanse in terms of that stuff um it, it always seems heavy-handed and, and unnecessary and so i guess my my sensitivity to it was already a bit on alert because it's like, okay, Netflix, I'm going to watch your show, but please don't do this again, right? Come on, we've learned, mm. right? We can be better. And then I started to notice that this, this, there was a huge disparity in the 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 way that genders was sort of determining whether or not a character was likely to be foolish and 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 or, or intelligent. Um, which you know, I I, <laughs> I don't know. I, it's it's hard to know, I guess. But I did mm. feel like. Mm, but I'll watch more of it. If well, you think it's well, pan, pans out, I will watch more. Well, I, I'm mm. not. Don't, don't mistake me in saying that I think it's a mas, a mm. masterpiece at all. Oh, I no. think the sort of critic, like the criticism you're bringing up there, I don't think carries further. Okay. Uh, or I certainly didn't notice it at all. I th one of the male characters in particular, I thought was brilliantly done, especially in what his character is supposed to be in the story. Um, it it. It mm. wasn't, he wasn't the obvious villain. Uh, yeah, anyway, I, I just, but it's not a masterpiece. It's a very simple story. There are very common tropes of mm. storytelling there and that's all fine. But I think that holds together enough to sit there and enjoy Pretty the art animation. style and the animation. <laughs> and, yeah. Which know, is, I, which is just dripping with gorgeousness in every, yeah, every phenomenal. scene. But yeah. Well, I well, I have to say this like I really, really understand what you're saying. That I so I haven't seen a show that yet that I felt that like like in the in the ways walkness, but I definitely look at the movies and uh, and the media right now through that lens, which I don't think mm -hmm. is helpful. I I try to classify the piece of media, whether it's like leftist, rightist, centrist. I I try I. I Instead of like enjoying enjoying the piece of media, I try to find underlying political message that someone tries to send send to me, and that's not helpful because I'm pretty sure that ninety percent of the time when I see something, I'm just making it up in my head, and uh, I understand what you're going through, and I hate that I'm going through the same same thing same thing as well. It's a well, no. I, let, let me. I, 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 I sort of. I, I know what you're saying, and I agree with you. There is certainly always a characteristic of you. Know, if you look for it, you're going to find it, even if it's not there, right? And oh no, no, it's not just like like I expect. It's more likely to be there now, and it's and it triggers what I have already seeing the connections up to the eleven instead of enjoying the media anymore. I, I know for sure that I I have this apprehension watching Netflix content and I do not have the, that same apprehension when I watch Prime Video, right? That that should, I, I, why is that, right? It's it's the same prejudiced mind that's watching this content, right? But but I, I am very conscious of, because honestly, I don't want to commit my time to watching, you know, hours of television that's going to end in, in, in you know, nonsense storytelling. Basically, mm. because yeah, of, I because of YouTube, political... let's for that. <laughs> okay, so, so, so partly, I think my sensitivity is there because of that. Because honestly, I, 
I wouldn't even mind the kind of, you know, heavy handed woke narrative. Like I wouldn't mind it if it didn't get in the way of the story. Cause then I don't think I'd even notice it or care. It's because so often it does get in the way of the story that I think I find it very difficult. Did anybody watch wheel of time for me? I guess the series just disappointed me most of m the most in the last years. That's really interesting. Yeah. Has any, have any of you guys watched the wheel of time? I, I didn't. I haven't. I, I will get around to watching it, but I haven't yet. No. The series um, disappointed me the most in the last years. That that's quite <laughs> that's not quite the recommendation. Yeah, I was a bit worried about it. It seemed very much like Amazon was trying to make a Game of Thrones, and and that seems like the wrong reason to make a make a piece of content. I think Game of Thrones killed my interest in the shows like Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, yeah it's funny actually because the Wheel of Time should be in many ways something that would be like very appealing to me. Like you know, it's like hey, there's a there's a like a a, a well funded science fiction fantasy story. I, I will say that I did think I started to read the first book and didn't enjoy it especially, um, which might have also made me not want to watch the the series. But yeah, I'm I'm curious, Chrisma, if uh, you had a sort of had set expectations and had read the books and were mm. anticipating it on a certain level. Did the trailers hype you up? Like where were your expectations going into it? And it did it just not meet them or was it crappy on its own? <laughs> it's kind of what I'm one curious of. The, of. One of the odd things about Wheel of Time um, is that it, it feels like nobody's talking about it. Like it doesn't feel like there's like a whole bunch of people saying this is hot garbage, this ruined my life, screw you, right? Mm. Charisma accepted slightly. But, but it doesn't really feel like many people are saying anything about it. Like, it feels like, uh, you know, the, 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 it sounds like an Oscar Wilde quote, which is, we'll get to the, you know, the, there's the, you know, that the only thing worse than people talking about you is nobody talking about you. You know, it's, it, it's, it's, it feels like, it feels like the Wheel of Time is just nobody's even annoyed by it. It's that sort of underwhelming. Um, and, and again, I'm only basing that on my lack of, you know, <laughs> coming across people that have, have mentioned it. I only knew that the Wheel of Time came out here because there were some ads mm. on the underground and I was taking underground recently. And right. yeah, nothing apart from that. Don't know if it's good, bad. Right. Schedule. Well, Christmas just saying, I guess it might be okay if you never ah. read the books. So it seems as if the books were setting expectations for him that the show didn't it's meet. It's tough. So. It is tough. It is tough to convert these things, especially if you've got an idea of what things should look like and how characters should feel. And, and also because the moment they start making a TV version of it, they start taking liberties with the story and for what they think of as good reasons. But yeah, it's hard to, mm. it's hard to get it to work. Um, so... I, I we've got a few other things to talk about real quick and then we'll take a break if that's okay We're, I will rattle these off um my hero academia um I don't know if you guys have seen this anime um I I've just recently finished the the, the most recent season um but they changed things so much and they left and then left things yeah yeah, that's that's what they always do, unfortunately, Chris. <laughs> it it totally sucks. I, I've never it's very rare that you get a book adaptation done right. I, and I can't even say like The Expanse, which is a show that we clearly like here, is a good adaptation of the books because I've not read the books. Um, but yeah, it, it, I, I just yeah, think I don't it's really to read the books, just not to retroactively destroy the show for myself. I did think the witch, <laughs> I did think The Witcher was a pretty good adaptation, but again, I've only read The Blood of Elves, not The Blood of Elves, The The Last Wish, so I thought it was pretty good on that basis. But anyhow. Um, yeah, my, my Hero Academia continue, continues to be super good fun. And I also watched this anime, uh, which is that time I was reincarnated as a slime, um, which is a weird title. Have you guys heard of this? <clears throat> no. I haven't heard of it. This show fascinates me. My Hero Academia is fantastic. It's super good fun. It's, it's, it's the sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's good solid anime fare. This, this anime, uh, that time I was reincarnated as a slime, um, it has absolutely no right to be any bloody good whatsoever. Like it, it is, it is absolutely absurd. And yet I could not help but recommend it. It is phenomenal. <laughs> it, it is the, the story is basically starts off in modern day Japan and a man, a guy sort of salary man guy just gets murdered. And That's then he appears in another universe 
and he has been reincarnated as a slime, like from from the you know, video game world. And this is heavily sort of video game logic kind of based story, fantasy world. And he basically goes from being a slime to basically running a country. And every step of that journey, you get to see it. And it is way better than it has any right to be. It is absurd. It, I, I really want you guys to watch this so that we can talk about why this is because I can't quite understand. I think partly it's because it's a really good example of the hero's journey. Um, so I read quite a few mangas with that mm. trope and uh, how yeah. repetitive and how the same going through things uh, and ended up with this like weird anime slash manga harem situation. It happens. I still like it. And I can't tell you. Nothing in why. here is. Everything in here is a massive classic trope, right? It is. It is basically cliche on top of cliche. It is trope on top of trope. I can't explain why. It's still really charming, and I do think there is something really clever about its underlying hook, which is that it's this kind of weird video gamey world. So the little slime guy basically starts leveling up and gains more powers and then uses them in subsequent episodes so you get this sort of sense of progression but then the interesting thing is kind of like the expanse does is it really does keep expanding it really keeps going places so every time the story suddenly sort of lurches forward in terms of where where the narrative is sitting it really does continue to grow from there it doesn't sort of just okay okay we might be the ruler of the known universe but we're now going to go on little dungeon crawling adventures no now it's a political drama like why why but it's brilliant it all makes sense it's fantastic. So i have a question mm. uh, because i read things things uh, like that and i do uh, i do like my, uh, the uh, main character be a bit of mary sue overpowered uh in in those uh, but i have one question so because i quite often in those uh, the main character I like the ones that main character plays within the rules of the world. He just is able to bend and abuse the living shit out of the rules instead of having like completely, mm. completely breaking the rules and having not being bound by the internal consistency of the story. Yeah. Yeah. Which one would you say it is? I would, I would say <laughs> it's difficult. I, I would say it is basically bound by the consistency of the story well enough as in, this That's is the thing we... that there's so many things that it does wrong, right? It, it's it's a masterclass of cheesy, generic anime style storytelling. I cannot explain why I love this show so much. It is brilliant. <laughs> All I can say is, really, just go and watch a couple of episodes, and if you don't feel the same way, I I totally get is it. it. On Netflix, um, I I watched it on Funimation, um, but yeah, I'm sure it's available in other places. Um, but yeah, weird one. Definitely a weird one. Uh, real quick, because I'm gonna, I need to take a break. I'm sure you guys do too. But I watched the French Dispatch, which is Wes Anderson's new movie, which was fantastic. Um, oh, this Wes Anderson, okay. Um, two of them. Yes, no, not Wes Craven. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the, this this movie is great. It's it's a very different movie from his other movies um, in the sense that its uh, pacing and its storytelling mechanism is very different. It's like lots of little micro stories telling the story of a newspaper um, that essentially hired these fantastic journalists and it's all about their quirky personalities and then sort of reflecting on the nature of the newspaper and the stories that they've told uh, after the death of the owner of the newspaper. It sounds very sort of... That sounds like a Wes Anderson movie. Tiresome. Yeah, yeah. It is brilliant. It's brilliant, Wes Anderson stuff. There's, there's just fan it's the usual Wes Anderson cast. It's the usual gorgeous direction, um, just overwhelmingly beautiful direction, and just really quirky, strange stories and oddball storytelling. Um, it, it's great, it, and and ironically, it kind of almost is this kind of episodic thing that kind of tells these little stories that sort of build up <laughs> towards the end. But yeah, re really lovely movie. Really enjoyed it. It's not. Not quite as endearing, I guess, as Grand Buda Budapest or, or the um, the Darjeeling Express, but it, it it is it is a great movie. Have you seen How about it? Isle of Dogs. I, I I liked Isle of Dogs, but I wasn't as in love with Isle of Dogs as a lot of people have been. I think it's a great movie, but but I I, I did like it. Um, I, I, uh, I would say I, I enjoyed the French Dispatch more. 
Yeah, I haven't seen it, but uh, I'll definitely give it a watch based on your recommendation. Yeah, it's a, it's a good one. Um, and then finally, and <laughs> I don't think these two come up particularly as a segue, so let's go from Wes Anderson to Let There Be Carnage. Um, this was a really generic movie. Like, I don't even know why they bothered. Like, I, I mm. it felt like such a waste of use, uh, of Tom Hardy. Um, mm. it, 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 it was really just like, it filled the time, you know, kind of film. It was such a weird one. Someone tried to get me to see this and I just straight passed. I, I, yeah. I thought that's kind of what I expected from it and couldn't be bothered. <laughs> so, and, and then the but, movie yeah. finished as if it couldn't even be bothered to finish it. So, you know, it was like, oh, whatever, it's dead now and whatever. Yay. <laughs> It really, it really yeah. just didn't. It just didn't seem to give a shit about like telling a story. I, it just. I mean, like, why would they? This is the movie that was supposed to be in a Spider-Man universe that is clearly connected to MCU. Now this is just like unwanted child that they're going to put out. But there is nothing wrong with the character. There is nothing wrong with Tom Hardy's performance as both Venom and and uh, and the, the whatever the not not Venom. It it's just. Carnage? No, no, Carnage was the bad guy, Woody Harrison character. Woody Harrison was just Woody Harrison all over the place. Um, it just it, it, it just feels like just such an atrocious abuse of Tom Hardy's time that they made this movie. Like I, mm. he's just done such great things. He should have been making season two of Taboo, not this. A hundred percent. Just such a really weird thing. Anyway. I thought I'd mention it just in case anybody was tempted to pay any any more than two p to watch it. Um, so <laughs> don't don't do that. Um, right, cool. I think that's pretty much most of the movies that we were going to talk about. So I suggest we take a little break and we come back and talk about some some books and some other random stuff um, and some philosophy ideas and some sciencey stuff. How's that? Sounds fantastic. That, that's a detailed ex, that's a rich and detailed explanation of what we're going to talk about in a second. But I'm going to grab you some water. You are a wordsmith. <laughs> I am a wordsmith. <laughs> I'm trying to find my BRB button. Right, we'll be right back, guys. So we'll be here about two minutes. Cheers, boy.
live again. Hello! Right. So, hi everybody. Um, right. Uh, let's talk about Hail Mary. <laughs> okay. So, so Hail Mary is a, a book. Uh, Joe, you recommended the book. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a book by Andy Weir, who is the author of The Martian. People may know that one as it was adapted mm -hmm. to film. Um, yeah, it's a. I think I pitched it to you as a perfectly inoffensive, fun, <laughs> interesting sci fi book. It's there's no profundity here. There's no, but it's it's really fun. There are interest. There's interesting science in it, and it's a sort of I would say set contemporarily, like it's set, but it's the topic. It's the typical sort of near you know, futureish. Near futureish. There's going to be a world. I mean, can I give a loose plot line? I mean, I'm sorry, I think no so. Real yeah, spoilers. Mm. Yeah. So basically, they notice the energy of the sun has begun to reduce, and they are monitoring it closely, and they realize that the growth, that the rate of decrease in energy of the sun is exponential, um, and so they realize very quickly that this will be you know, world ending in terms of humanity. So um, there's this sort of rush to identify the issue and resolve it, I would say, is loose, loosely the plot of the book. Um, yeah, it, it's yeah. difficult because like in order to talk about this, there, there, are, there, are, a few, there are a few key points in the story that mm. I think deserve, um, would, would need to be spoken about. One of them, one of the key components of the story is probably a massive spoiler. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and it's really difficult because like I, i'm very tempted to say that we should probably just spoiler warn it and just just rip that band-aid off because yeah the, it's, the, if we to talk about it at all we kind of talk about that but i did really enjoy that yeah yeah that reveal i guess like you could say so much because you know where it's going but you don't know how far it's going i mean you know i guess it would be one way to say it but. So, so the story is very much it very much starts off martian-esque there seems to be an astronaut that's in in difficulty and is trying to science his way out of the problem conducting some of the weirdest early initial experiments that I, I don't see them as being a massive priority but you know he, he he basically is trying to work out why he's got gravity he's not trying to work out how much oxygen he might have right that that his first priority seems to be calculating how much gravity he has and, and why and is sort of using that to try and infer where he might be but it just seems like a, a weird well priority. how would he know the gravity of a situation put him I, I can only <laughs> apologize for Pavel um so <laughs> so there he is trying to work out the gravity of the situation. So the story is basically told in sort of flashback form. So he's he's basically going back to Earth and mm. um, sort of explaining how he gets himself. In, well, he's sort of recovering it's, his memories, isn't he? He's yeah, to... it's the amnesia mm. reveal sort of trope where he is getting more and more memories as the time goes on. So we effectively have a, a time jump from past to present. And so, and so like... Yeah, it, I, 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 this this book was really interesting to me because I really did not. It was really hard for me to get past the first few chapters, <laughs> um, because there were just really like it's it was a really sort of strange storytelling device of in order to make your lead. And this is why I compared it to Dan Brown. I think when we spoke to it, because in order to make your lead character super smart, you have to just reduce everybody's IQ around, that's around them to the level of just borderline mm. functional human mm. beings yeah but i thought you were misaligned that that <laughs> I, I saw it more as lazy exposition <laughs> sure than, yeah yeah than trying to prop up a character i didn't think that he was ever trying to make this guy smart i mean i think he was trying to make him precisely what he was which is a high school science teacher you know <laughs> like yeah well, and a biologist but, and, yeah. and, a, and a world-class mm. biologist in, in general yeah like but but he I, yes, it was lazy exposition. There was a lot of that. Mm. Um, and yeah. there was a lot of conversations between two people that should know damn well what they're talking about, but still they're going to explain it to each other. Yeah. Um, 
I find more forgivable than that in books because there's uh, that's the only way you can do it. Obviously, exposition is the rather than film because you mm. have other ways than just characters standing there talking to each other. But in text based, I mean, that's a little more difficult. You don't have the yeah, so I, I, a little I, more forgiving on the book side. But I, I agree, it's a challenge, but I, it is really noticeable in this book, and it's not mm. always as noticeable. So there's at least that. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Now, I think I think the I, the reason I want to spoil the the sort of the key reveal, the mid mid book key reveal, is because I think it's also where the book changed for me, from becoming a, a slightly tiresome book that wasn't really that interesting. Like its central conceit was sort of fairly interesting, and and I, and I kind of vaguely under you know liked the kind of back and forth storytelling, so that you get the kind of action bits mixed in with the kind of background story. Um, and there was even you know a reason for that and fair enough but it, it was pretty boring stuff i mean um it, it the martian i think would probably i never read the book of the martian but it certainly felt like the conceptually that martian had a better driver for its narrative um where moment to moment things would be more exciting um or it felt that way but then the book and 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 so yeah if anybody doesn't want this board at all Please, please leave now and and come back when you see the the picture of the book gone. Um, but the book changes when he when he discovers the alien, to me, mm. and that's when it suddenly becomes interesting. Um, not just because I was actually slightly impressed with the way that they discovered the language stuff, mm-hmm. and and start to communicate, and I was sort of impressed with the way they talked about the how different the alien would be. And yet, potentially still sentient and capable of doing things, and and why you know, I I thought that got really interesting. And then uh, then I actually think the dynamic between him and the alien was just brilliant. I thought it was really good fun and entertaining. Mm. Um, yeah, it was a, it was a, it was a popcorn muncher of a book, but it absolutely it it starts off I think on its worst possible footing, unfortunately. Yeah, it's funny how different our experiences were with it. I again, I wasn't searching for a deep. <laughs> quality and profundity but uh yeah i i was i was relatively captured by it i i i can't say yeah i can't say i was thinking oh this is boring but yeah it certainly i, I saw the that that reveal coming but I didn't know to what level it would be. And when it was a fully sentient spacefaring <laughs> alien uh and and let's just say that there were some very incredibly intelligent things that he did and i thought were really creative like right when they, fir- when they first meet this they eventually are able to dock their ships together yeah and, yeah, and then they, the, how did they the, solve the that? guy puts up a barrier between the two things and the barrier is constructed of all these different materials and then <laughs> basically the human character selects one of these materials without I don't want to give too much of the book away, but the, it's so incredibly intelligent why the human picks that and then why it's later interesting to the alien and why it subverts expectations. And it, it's there's some really clever stuff there amongst the, you that, know, that's other, when, otherwise. That's when the book really, stuff. yeah, it really took mm. off for me because it, it, mm-hmm. solved, it solved real problems in an interesting way. Like, yeah. Whereas the previous parts of the book just felt like, they they were only making the decisions they made because fundamentally they needed to get him into this position. Like mm. it, it really felt super contrived how he got into this position. Like so shoehorny. <laughs> but once he was there, the story really felt like it 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 was actually now pretty grounded actually, and they had yeah. actual problems and they solved them in smart ways. And like it, yep. it was a little bit you know uh, nerdy to say the least, but it was good. You know I, I really enjoyed it and actually became quite sweet um, as as it went along. Um, absolutely yeah so yeah I, it's it's an odd book i would say definitely gets better in its its uh, second half for sure um but yeah i did i did it made me reflect quite a bit on like the verisimilitude like we, we were i was weirdly in a talking about this the other day about sort of the very verisimilitude of fantasy storytelling and sort of pavel you were mentioning this earlier when we were talking about anime like the nature of like how how you know is the story internally consistent right and and like is the world believable and playing on its own rules and if it isn't the moment it breaks that contract with you the reader um it's incredibly jarring 
and I and I felt too much like early on in the book. It, it was it was like this, and and this is why I was like very much on the cusp of putting it down. And then and then something actually happened, and then it got interesting, <laughs> which is which is kind of which is kind of odd. But yeah, um, yeah, it's it's a hard one to recommend because of that. Um, but you, you you seem to like it a lot more than I did, and there's there's no, there's nothing wrong with that assessment. Uh, I don't think I liked it. A lot more than you are just not as hard on its faults <laughs> as you are, I guess. Um, yeah, I don't. I don't always so look for the most think it was brilliant. As shit as Will thought. <laughs> well, no, I recognize the faults. I just don't think they detract as hard. Yeah, I guess. I guess I was not as displeased by the negative parts parts <laughs> of it as you were. Uh, yeah, it's not that I think it's the most brilliant book ever, but uh, there was definitely some really intelligent concepts, as you say, in the latter half. Um, and yeah, the problem, first of all, the recognition of the problems that would be present yes. in that scenario were brilliant. And then the resolution of those problems were all, was also brilliant. Um, Early on, and, it felt like Dan Brown. Yeah. And at the end, it found it, it felt like what Dan Brown thinks he sounds like in his head, right? This is, this is, <laughs> it, it, it really went from, you know, it just, it felt dumb, contrived, smart to actually being quite clever. And and mm. and I, I really enjoyed it when it got clever. Um, yeah, yeah. There there, yeah. there was some, but but yeah, yeah. It's certainly an entertaining book, and I, and I think you know if it's it's a good holiday read. I'd, I'd say probably exactly. And I put it in the same level of arcane. Like I'm not saying here, sitting here saying it's the most brilliant <laughs> thing, but it, I didn't. I was not even remotely close to regretting having spent the time reading it. I, Joe, I, Joe, it was, shit will get off the pot, my friend. It's the internet. Everything's either fucking amazing, the best thing ever. The world's going to be better. We need more of this every day in our lives, or it's shit. It's I mean, you joke, worst. but it pisses me off how black and white things are with people all the time. It's like there is room for grey in the world. <laughs> it can exist. It is possible. <laughs> but yeah, no. yeah. I, I, I think so it is a citizen cane of books. I get it. Ah, oh, see, we, there's we one, got a, we got a fan. Me. <laughs> it's one in my camp. <laughs> How are you doing, Zappo One Four Seven? Yeah, I didn't. I to be clear, I didn't hate the book. I just think that for me, uh, all the way or nothing. <laughs> nothing is the way. Um, exactly. Yeah. So I, I, I think that to me, the first half just felt unnecessarily contrived, and the latter half really paid off for a wow. lot of the contrivedness. But. And I, and I think that's a shame because, like, you know, it could I could have put it down if it hadn't been for the fact that I wanted to finish it so that I could talk about it today with you, and which made me yeah. quite glad because in the end I kind of in in retrospect I kind of thought well that was kind of a little bit fun you know, it was a fun idea it was like and and I enjoyed yeah I definitely enjoyed the midsection, um, sure. yeah cool yeah we should we should do more book chats actually There's, I I don't get many book recommendations these days or if I do they're usually for some like really esoteric philosophy ideas that you know I'm like I don't know if I want to read this so I appreciated the suggestion for sure yeah. uh, give me a sec while I open my iPad which has just conveniently gone to sleep on me uh, yeah the most to... books that I read right now is mostly the commute books uh, which I listen to which is like some generic military science fiction which I don't think I could oh. ever recommend recommend to anyone <laughs> I, I will say this. Uh, I listened to the audiobook version of this. Uh, did you listen to the audiobooks, uh, Joe? Or did, I, did you read I did, it? yeah. I listened so, to the audiobook. So they did the, uh, in the audible version, I don't know if there are other recordings, but they do the, the, the um, they, they do certain voice effects <laughs> for, for characters. Are you telling me you didn't tear up when he went back to Rocky? No, no, that was good. Honestly. Well, Sylvester Stallone is in that book. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that, that's when the book. That's when the, when he met that character. That's when everything got better for me. Like the book got smarter, and it also got more interesting, and it became quite sweet, and it was quite compelling. I thought it was really good. Great question. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought I thought the way they did the they did the language stuff in the audiobook was very smart. And 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 it's yeah. not often you get those little uh added added efforts added into these things. So I was like I appreciate that. Okay, yeah. as a person who haven't read the book, mm -hmm. important question, Rocky, how many readers he had on the forehead? Actually probably quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> um but yes, in any case. Um, now let's talk about let's talk about this, which I've not seen, and, and Pavel has claimed to see, which is Foundation. Um, oh yeah. Well, what is Foundation? This is this is. So Foundation Sorry, go ahead. is uh, is a new TV show from Apple TV, and it's based on one of my favorite uh, series of books, mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, I always forget, is it Isaac Asimov? Yeah, from mm. Isaac Asimov. Unfortunately, I sometimes mistake uh, Isaac Asimov for Arthur C. Clarke. Very different. Like, <laughs> all people, great books. <laughs> Must be the same person. Uh, yeah, it, it's really, really interesting to show. Uh, the basic premise is that you cannot predict the future, but you can predict, uh, in general terms, uh, movements of societies. Okay. Uh, and uh, the humanity is united in interstellar empire uh, with uh, with uh, one scientist predicting that the empire will fall because of the how it's being governed and it's a uh, quite subversive uh, mm -hmm. subversive uh, information and yeah the series of the books was really interesting uh, at, at the time i think a lot of like understanding of how technology or science works moved on from isaac asimov what isaac asimov thought uh 70 years ago <laughs> so i'm not sure if you can if i can recommend it apart from the same way as june but the show he, the way it looks is just gorgeous uh, really I've watched, oh. yes I watched it at the same time I was watching Dune, and it really felt like it suddenly that this style of uh, of, of viewing mm. is uh, back in action. So uh, this was I had no idea how they could adapt this, as there was not that many characters in the book by itself. Mm -hmm. uh, it was more written more as a, a histo like bit of like history book. Mm -hmm. I would say it's very similar, again, similar to the Dune. Mm -hmm. So they had to invent quite a bit of a characters. And and I had a bit of problem with my wokeness alarm, as you mentioned. Right, okay. As all, as, as all <laughs> the color characters are basically uh, uh, people of color, but it didn't went in any way direction that I would dislike. I'm still at the beginning, but I would recommend in the way that it looks the it didn't feel like a tv show it really felt like i'm watching a, a movie that's interesting i've i don't think i've ever had my wokeness alarm tingle when 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 it's a, it's a racial di you know diversity thing it's always it always occurs to me if it's a gender diversity thing it's, or like it, the way it, the characters are drawn. I, I, I conflated those two themes and the only mm. reason why i even like mentioned that is because of the things that i read on the internet mm. that i kind of like predispose me to be very very much looking for that but uh Definitely not. The, hmm. what, yeah, one of the just reasons looking at the trailer, it does look visually stunning. One, but, of, um, one of the reasons I was, yeah. So here's the thing: I was, I was surprised. I've not really heard of anything about this, right? But one of the reasons why I was slightly surprised that the effects were so good is that this piece of artwork that apparently I found on the internet looks like the worst kind of garbage. Like this, this is this is my this is like a standard issue. 3D effect from some shitty off off brand oh, Photoshop awesome. product. <laughs> this looks like a video game character from something that never made it out of the day, and they've just stuck it on with glue. I don't even think that's actual Photoshop. It looks like Mass Effect Andromeda. It, it's really bad. Let me see if I can find. Can you send me a link to the trailer, and we'll put the trailer back up without the audio, and we'll, Let we'll me go that way. <clears throat> Let's have a look at this. <laughs> Is that 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 seems unfair <laughs> to judge it on the basis of that then? Here we go, foundation trailer. I got it. Oh, it's uh, I recognize that guy. I, I can't I couldn't tell you why, but let me let me screen share that. Boom, there we go. Oh yeah, the only person that I recognize from this is Jared Harris. Is that the guy I just thought I saw at the very beginning of this? I assume so. Oh, that that's that's not bad. All right, that looks pretty. That guy. Yep. Oh yeah, this is. Uh... And uh, yeah, it definitely has it's... Dune vibes, doesn't it? <laughs> it's got and that same that... color palette. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and definitely, the show in terms of the world building, it's. Well, Whoa, what I love about that's it, it's... Sorry, Paul. Although it's definitely more talking through things show than a uh, too much action show. Thank you, uh, Zappo. He was in The Expanse as well, but faded in the background. I wonder if The Expanse, if he left The Expanse for this. Yes, that is true. He is from The Expanse. That's how I've seen him. Thank you. 
Zappo, you you are you are you are the man of the match. I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and you make you chat MVP for that because that really that's that would have bugged me all day. This looks really nice. How how many yeah. seasons is it? So so far, uh, so far there's one season and I'm halfway to it. Whoa, uh, this looks really pretty. <laughs> like no yeah, shit. Yeah. 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 All right. All right. And and the story I'll the story's working so far halfway through. Uh, so I would say the story so far it feels still like a, I'm in a setup phase. Yeah. But also it's very very hard for me to see how they are going to actually show the whole story, uh, considering uh, it's supposed to be a ga galactic events. Uh, but they clearly have a budget. No mm, shit, that yeah, is a budget. They they saved yeah. all of that money on making the title look nice. That they've they just been able to just stretch <laughs> that out in in <laughs> into the rest of the show. That that looks really nice. Um, cool. Well, fuck yeah, and that's on Apple TV, right? I mean, and yeah. I, I guess other pirated software solutions are available. But like, I have no idea what you're talking no, about. No, exactly. But uh, Apple TV, so that's a that's a really hard place, I think, for that to exist. Right? I, I don't know many people that are talking about Apple TV or saying, "Hey, you got to get on that Apple TV," because like, I think that's why they're, they're throwing the budgets uh, behind the things just to start the conversation. And I don't think it works. Yeah, Apple TV is a platform. You mean? Uh, or, as a, or, uh, no, as a throwing the, the money. Strategy. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> Is, is it going to be that you think at some point we're going to get that? I love it. We're in the golden age of TV. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, in some ways, we, we have got the best TV shows that we've ever had. That You know, the, the distinction between, like, a movie and a TV show now is, like, next to nothing. Um, movies are coming I'm, out looking worse than episodes of some TV shows by a fair margin. Yeah. I'm more than happy if we have more space for better, you know, good art to be created. And the fact that, to episodics have gotten that far is awesome if if someone's got the money to throw in whether it's episodic or film i'm great if it just brings more to the art form but they're not episodic they're just telling a movie just they're just taking their sweet ass time about it they're telling they make i wish it was episodic they're just telling it's just a movie in chunks <laughs> you know and and and, and, it, and so I, I, would you say it's episodic if it there is are a, huge... it is technically episodic Sorry. No, but yes, if there are, there if are in a plot, <laughs> but in a plot, if they're in the plot, there are huge time jumps with different characters coming at, diff at different points because there is definitely, it was introduced already, uh, the the time jumps and just like changing complete the, uh, a lot of actors. With that, is it episodic at this point or is it still that saying the same story? I I, I think that that would. Well, I don't know. It depends. The, the the show that I think did this the best is The Wire. Like the storytelling arcs, the nature of the storytelling arcs in The Wire are some of the best ways of telling that long form storytelling without it ever feeling like you're you're just something exciting is going to happen at the end of this episode. If you're if you're mid episode, nothing really meaningful is going to happen. You know that they might be some like hook at the beginning, but it won't really pay off until later. Like. The, the wire followed none of those rules and therefore was really fucking brilliantly entertaining to watch moment to moment like you just never knew when somebody was going to get shot or something was massive was going to happen and and the story the story arcs were lots of little micro rainbows and then these bigger rainbows and then these massive things would come back from like you know many 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 hours of television before and and that was great um but these these sort of the, the the standard issue storytelling tropes just seem to be so tiresome of just you know little every every episode ends on as as a, basically as an advert for the next episode right and that that's that makes me feel sad because I think it affects the the way the story is but uh, I being think... told. <clears throat> Sorry, can I just read Zappo's comments? Sorry, because I realize he's sure. supposed to view. Um, Keep keep chucking money at projects. Yeah, that is the that is the way a lot of people. Are. We're going to talk about Microsoft in a moment. Um, <laughs> uh, love me some huge uh, time jumps like the three body problem books. Yes, I really need to read those. People keep mentioning them, and I really need to read the three body problem books. Uh, Joe tried to get me back. Uh, tried to get me to read seven of us. Seven of us. Seven. Uh, it's called Seven Eves. Yeah. Seven Eves. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, but it didn't. It's, Stick. Oh. it's uh it's the first hard science fiction book i ever read and 
I don't know if anyone cares to spoil it. I won't say too much, but you basically get a third of the way through the book and there's been all this time invested in characters and all this very detailed analysis of these characters and you've been with them the whole way through these trials and tribulations. And with no warning, you turn the page and it just says 5,000 years later. Ah. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, that, that book. Fuck. And it's really dry. Like it, it it's i'm yeah i'm glad i read it but it's pretty deep into the nerdy sci-fi stuff he spends a lot of time trying to justify the tech and the things that are going on in the hmm. in the in the world but yeah but yeah no, talk no, about a time jump <laughs> jesus <laughs> that yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a bit of a everyone that you loved is dead yeah, yeah <laughs> that's exactly. right yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep <laughs> fuck um so yeah, foundation. That looks the shit. That looks really good. I might see. Just, just to quickly go back to the mm. reason why we moved to the uh, to the episode content, though. Mm. I do have to say, just like watching the TV, like in like nine nineties at the beginning, there was one thing that was really annoying that every show be episodic. In forty minutes, no matter what happens, no matter how crazy the story they go through, everything will go back to exactly the same it right. was before because it always have to go back to status quo. Mm -hmm. The Simpsons I problem, yeah. I think avoiding this problem now we went like comp we put the whole pendulum to the other side uh, mm. instead of just like finding like a middle ground of being able to tell the story that they change, but not focus that it always has to change. Yeah, I think I think I think that's true. I think there 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 there, there is the trap of the kind of like serialized content, but that's only a trap if you're not like Doctor Who right or, or, or star trek these shows like them they mechanically allowed for you to tell one and done stories with this with a sort of repeating cast of characters but mechanically allowed you to do these one and done stories um i mean but even doctor who stopped doing that and started telling these long form epics you know just that it stopped being about the fun little random you know rock quarry that they happened to be in this week right it was just it, it it started to be about some global Dalek conspiracy and every episode was building up to some nonsense for the next one. And I, I, I just, I, to me, it makes me sad and I really wish they would just do these little more episodic, properly like self-contained episodes. And The Witcher would have been a fantastic platform, I think, to do that. And it saddens me that season two has opted for more broader storytelling tools. Um, would, yeah. would you say that you would prefer it all to be on that sort of <clears throat> more episodical style or because I, I, personally i'm excited that there is room to tell m more room to tell stories for example my favorite book series i would love it's it's written so cinematically like it would be so perfectly adapted to the screen but there's nowhere near enough in the runtime of a movie to tell this story mm -hmm. and i would love to see it done uh, as a tv show uh, you know so I'm, I'm excited for that <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that. What do you mean by that? that, that oh, I mean enough... about just like the oncoming Lord of the Rings Amazon uh, TV oh, series. I didn't know. <laughs> what's where, what's it going to be set on? Lord of the Rings. Oh, they are those books again. Okay. The, oh, well, oh, that's a luck. shame. They, they should do The Hobbit because that's the one that they could definitely span out much, much, much longer than you would think was rational by any reasonable judgment. Yeah, there's so much that happens in that tiny little book. <laughs> uh, Zappu sure. says being episodic would work brilliantly for Star Trek. It allowed for infinite possibilities of creativity. Yes, I, I really think that's the thing. To me, it just meant that I, if I didn't like an episode, then next week would be something completely different. So that could be fun. And you, right. you need you, one thing you need to do when you're doing that sort of thing. I, uh, you need different writers for each episode. Uh, which, as Scott says, Doctor Who was a bit of a blend of episodic and hold storytelling. It, I mean, it, it used to not be. It used to be much more episodic. But but again, they would have different writers. Uh, Doctor Who got really bad once. The, they, they their writing team just boiled down to just a couple of guys that they were that were writing most of the episodes. And as a result, I think they. I don't know if if lazy seems like it's a harsh way of reframing it, but it certainly didn't feel. <laughs> Uh, that great Semerillion. I understand that that's an awful book. Yeah, so Zappa 140, 147 called me out of being absolutely wrong in every single way about every single thing that I ever said in my life. Somebody's got to. I, I, I'm just, just tired got of it. Down. 
You just got shut down, pal. It, it's set thousands <laughs> of years before the events of Lord of the Rings. Okay, Semerillion is the story that they're going to do the long form version of. Aha, uh-huh. that's. I hear that Semerillion is a terrible book. Um, I've never read it or tried to. So, parts of it. Yeah, I, I mean, you. I've enjoyed Lord of the Rings, but Tolkien. I mean, is obviously brilliant. Creative language is the whole thing. But man, does that guy have a waffle? Like you yeah. go back and read those books now, it's like, oh, there's 250 pages of a side story that has nothing to do with anything. Oh well, on we go. <laughs> oh, he's like Genesis wait, from the Bible, <laughs> and he did that wait, intentionally. Wait. Well, God, That's we all miss Tom Bombadil from the movies. Yeah. <laughs> All yeah. right, all right. Enough of this nonsense. Um, <laughs> let's let's move on because it, it's getting late. We've got, we've got a lot of things we could talk about right now. So I Amazon think... put four hundred sixty-five million in that TV show. Oh, that's uh, yeah. for Amazon put what? Four hundred sixty-five million. Which TV show? Do you mean Apple? In Lord of the Rings. Oh, the the new. Wow. Oh, jeez, that's crazy. But two hundred fifty million <laughs> of that is buying rights to the book. <laughs> Is but, it's still, <laughs> but it's still 215 million on the oh god wow wow they should sell nfts they should sell nfts well, right before we talk about that nonsense <laughs> let's talk about very quickly let's talk about some news right so so basically the biggest news of today is that microsoft bought basically amazon sorry microsoft bought amazon that that might that might have been that, slightly bigger news <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah that would be some big news you heard it first breaking news <laughs> basically bill gates and bezos basically just wanged them both out on the table to find out which one was finally bigger um no the, the, answer is <laughs> what i meant to say was microsoft bought activision blizzard so <clears throat> basically microsoft now owns call of duty diablo um world of warcraft it owns skyrim Starcraft, well it oh, already owns skyrim yeah. yeah um mm. it, it is it, it is kind of now pretty freaking nuts that microsoft owns all of these ips and studios what do you guys I mean, think it- it's, so, I think it's good for the Xbox Games Pass. I, I can't see the price staying at what it is anymore. Yeah, bringing those titles on board, I expect to see a price hike in the Games Pass for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'll play Diablo too <laughs> for sure. So considering Once, considering that Xbox Game Pass currently consists most of EA as well uh, yep. catalog, mm. uh, it becomes just like yeah, you should get the Xbox Game Pass, and I think that's what they're trying to do. Mm. Uh, it's Instant. a huge earner for them. I couldn't believe. I didn't think there would be that many subscribers. It's it's it's, it's absurd unreal. how many people have that. It's yeah. It's unreal. Completely like, ridiculous. Game, but Games Pass is a really good proposition. Like it, it mm. really genuinely is the PC and the Xbox version of it. Like it's genuinely good value for money. It's right now in the UK. It's about ten pounds. I think in the states it's about fifteen dollars. Um, it, it is crazy. I I would wonder whether they might do something. Like, at some point, this is going to get sleazy, right? At some point, this is going to get nickel and dimey. Like, I, I really hope it's not, but I just... Microsoft being nickel, dummy, and sleazy? <laughs> well, f- first, I hope they figure out how to write anywhere near decent software and just completely redo the game, the Games Pass for Windows thing. It's, it's such an atrocious oh, thing. It, yeah. could, it could certainly be better, it's but... Awful. But but I mean but I mean fundamentally I, I I'm wondering whether they'll go for like a tiered subscription service, rather like you you can pay like ten quid and you get this tiers worth of games and maybe if you pay twenty quid a month you get this tiers of games. So or they something. already have a two tiers or two tiers, uh, but it's That's not ultimate, about what right? the what the games they provide, but what the services they provide. They uh, and the ultimate one is provide the cloud <clears> gaming experience, <throat> which enables you to play on any browser. And considering the speeds of internet. Uh, would uh... you think, right? You think it would be viable? I tried that literally this morning, um, but after I heard this news, I was like, people. I heard some people mentioning like cloud-based gaming, so I was like, okay, I've got an iPad, I've got an Xbox controller here. Let's 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 get this going on. And I have the Ultimate Games Pass uh, edition, so I was like, yeah, I'm good to go. I tried Halo, and I tried. I tried Doom to first because I thought, well, you know, if if, if that works, then I'm I'm done for everything else. Like, no no further testing necessary. Um, so I'm I'm going from my i excuse me iPad to my wirelessly to my router and then out, and I've got a 300 meg down, uh, 50 meg up connection. Right, so pretty pretty fast. Should be plenty fast enough to do this in theory. 
it it did not work. Like it really was like it wasn't even as good as watching a Twitch stream. Like I, I it would have been it, it was so slow. Um, and, I, and I can't. Maybe maybe there are things I can do, like with my router. Well, Doom and, is probably the worst. <laughs> oh god, yeah, game yeah. To possibly try it with because exactly. the, you need the most precise in control inputs ever. I, I, interestingly enough, I tried this a long time ago mm. with. Uh, PlayStation Now or whatever yeah. they call their mm. streaming service because I wanted to play uh, The Last of Us. Mm. I'd never played it. I didn't own a Sony at the time. And for that, it worked absolutely brilliantly. There were some control delays, but not enough to affect that game. And it was a brilliant way for me to access that. <laughs> and they had a free month, you know, free first mm-hmm. month anyway. So, um, yeah, I think there's room for it to work but if oh, you're God, yeah. seriously considering games like doom you can't you can't play it with any but, kind but of it, control latency. but it, it, it wasn't just even just like minor input latency it, like it was freezing uh, okay. up and, and janking around and like sometimes it would like it i mean to be to be totally transparent this is in beta right now and like the okay. moment i quit out it was like hey how did you feel about that and then it was like a whole series of check boxes you could tick to say this shit happened this shit happened this shit like and and there is there's quite a lot of things like you know it could have been my my wi-fi was having a hard time in that moment maybe you know it's not a fair test to say that i tried it this one time i did try to play um so the thing like also the like, our networks the way that's like provided and what's being marketed is download and upload speed and no one uh, ever markets what's the la- latency mm-hmm. that you can get mm-hmm. because most of the time latency is not something that they can provide provide it's it's what what can you get like based on the mm. actual physical distances mm. so mm-hmm. i did try to play some of those games for uh, for me and the thing is like i'm getting latency to google servers like 10 milliseconds 40 milliseconds mm. uh, if i go outside of london uh, those go up to 100 and those are not visible to you if you watch uh, content or mm. if you mm. even if you play online you don't really see that it doesn't really matter but if you want to stream the whole game it will be at this point very very much location oriented it, it wasn't mm. it wasn't even a latency issue though that this was a janky like unplayable experience like no, not, I, not 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 even due to input lag and and then latency and response times it was it was it was clearly buffering updates in a really janky ass way and it was just but creating that, 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 but that's what i'm saying mm. like our whole infrastructure is more created for the streaming of the video content that you mm. can buffer mm-hmm. and they cannot use the tricks that are used for everything oh, else course. yeah in in this in real so time, that's yeah. what i'm saying that it will be more location oriented and uh, before we get like actual wire connection from their server to our computer not even going to the router i don't think this will be universal well it would be interesting because the, the way to test that would be for me to to just basically try it on my desktop pc with a hardwired connection right and see if and see if i get the same issues right uh, my suspicion is that the the routing that the wi-fi and the routing was the issue but but maybe yeah. not yeah it'd be interesting to find out but in any case i think it i think if it goes that way and they keep adding games like this then, then I think the ubiquity of games is going to become, you know, they're basically able to open the market up much larger. Like you no longer have to buy the console. Basically you pay one monthly fee and then kind of it becomes the Netflix of video games, right? You just, whatever device you've got, you you, you turn it on and just, you know, connect to the internet and off you go. Like if they can make it work, that's, that's a hell of a thing. Just one correction. <clears throat> Uh, and this and this would be a Netflix of video games the way the Netflix was five years ago, that you could got basically all of the content on mm. Netflix in front instead of getting twenty eight different subscription services. Yeah, your country's version of Netflix, you know, that's yeah. why uh, Netflix in Canada is totally unviable anymore. You get such a tiny selection versus what the US gets, and really? the prices are just continually going up. It's just I got rid of it the the last price hike let alone the one right now it's just that's that's not I'm, viable to me at all. I'm genuinely struggling to to justify holding on to Netflix. I have a reason to hold on to Netflix. And then and that is that all my, all my family is using Netflix account and I just don't want to go through the f- fucking bollock of telling them all that I'm disconnecting Netflix. <laughs> disconnecting. <laughs> but I'm paying, paying Netflix just so my family don't talk to me. I, the, 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 Witcher, the Witcher is pretty much the only... Like, Stranger Things kept me going for a while, like the hope of the next season of Stranger Things, that I really did love Stranger Things. 
and then and then uh the witcher was kind of interesting to me and i was like yeah i'm kind of holding on for that and i keep thinking like i'm paying like 10 pounds a month f- so that i can watch this one show like mm-hmm. like maybe maybe when they get around to making it right and and the most of the content on there just isn't like i i almost prefer to, if it's not available on prime video then it's available to buy and actually for for the amount of money it costs to buy a lot of these things which is usually you know sometimes you know between a fiver and a tenner right for the number of times where you really want to watch that movie and you can just you can just watch it you don't have to worry about whether it's on there or not um just yeah and and i i the, the answer to that for netflix should be their original programming Right, it should be the it, the witches. It should be the the Stranger Things. But the problem is, I and, I, and again, not wishing to bang this drum much more, but the the woke, heavy handed wokeness of a lot of their content has meant that I just am not interested in it. Mm. I'm not interested for a different reason, and the original programming. It's a uh, Netflix reputation for cancelling shows. Yes, I don't that feel well. going into the show, mm-hmm. knowing that. They might have idea for five seasons and it will be canceled no matter what after three seasons. If there would be a promise that they have a story for three seasons and that's what they want to do, perhaps we're going spin-offs later. But no, I kind of have it like guarantee right now that if I go into the show on Netflix, it will end up on an unsatisfying note in the middle of storyline. Mm. Cowboy Bebop was an interesting one. Sorry, go ahead, Jay. Oh, no, it's funny. My filter for them started long ago just with quality. They seem to have no care what they slap their name on, and it was just yeah. going on every steaming pile of garbage inside. And they just seem to want to create a massive bank of content but didn't care at all about the quality of what they were producing. So I, I lost interest so long ago after so many of the things I clicked on were just hot garbage. And it's <laughs> so. really infrequent that a movie that you want to watch is on there. Like this, this platform started out with like a kind of like, you know, it was it was basically video on demand. It was blockbusters over, through the post, right? And and it was all about like, you want the movie, you can get the movie from Netflix and they'll send it to you in the post. You watch it, you send it back. Great. And and like it was Love Film before it was called Netflix, right? And and like it was fine. That was that was fine. But it also the, the mental model was like, oh, I haven't seen that movie in ages. I want to watch that movie. I'm not going to buy it, but I could just rent it for like a, you know, a couple of quid, and then I watch that movie. Hey, happy days. I can't. The the number of times I've gone on there to see if a certain movie just happens to be on their platform, and it just never is. It just mm. never is. They've got some. They've got some films on there, but mostly it's their original programming stuff. And as you said, the quality is all over the map. Yeah, unfortunately, outside the USA, the, the content is just so heavily limited and they block mm. all the geo spoofing. Yes. <laughs> so it's just, yeah, it's ridiculous. Speaking of watch, NordVPN. Uh, use no, this don't, no, no. <laughs> yeah. And then we'll be doing Squarespace and to hell with that shit. Right. Um, so Microsoft, yeah, I don't know. Microsoft buys Activision. I, I think that's kind of nuts. It will be, it will be interesting to see. I mean, Sony's got to be feeling some pressure, right? I mean, that's not, that's not, that can't be a comfortable feeling. There was, uh, there next was some... acquisition. Oh God knows, but but I, I, how, who the fuck is left? I mean, you've got id. id I mean, id. Uh, so do they already got... have EA, right? Through no, no, no. They kind they, they of have got... agreement with EA. Yeah, no, they kind okay. of halfway there with EA. Mm. Uh, they've got which they've, to be honest, I, I expected that ea would be next acquisition considering that they were like really really connecting the services mm. I, I don't and, from big players perspective who the fuck is left like there's ubisoft just, yes that's true that is the answer to that question yeah ubisoft but who, who wants Sony. that but who well, wants ubisoft? and that's a really valid question they have it's... not i i saw the recent trailers for uh rainbow six extinction because it's it's out now or out this week or whatever but god that looks as generic hot garbage as i've ever seen i can't you believe forget that there are nfts in it so well there you go exactly yeah so i i i can imagine that microsoft is i mean assassin's creed has got some pretty good name recognition and and hasn't entirely burned its bridges the 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 the, the tom Cry. clancy stuff has historically had some good games or interesting games Far Cry has got some name recognition. I mean, it, it Ubisoft would be the next one, but it's also, I, I sort of feel like it's the last big studio that Microsoft hasn't bought. And then what does the fuck does Sony do? But 
If you told me a Ubisoft game was coming out, I just automatically wouldn't <laughs> yeah, care. Yeah, it would like... take some drastic change from the last eight years of Ubisoft for me to give a shit about any Ubisoft game. You, you're right. I am uh, so like, there with you, but like, I, 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 I got terrible. nothing in the tank for Ubisoft these days. So yeah. to be honest, in terms of like actual value, is uh, one of the biggest one is still Take Two, but it's. <laughs> Sorry. Mostly because because they have uh, they have one uh, one cash cow. Who's that? A take two. Oh, uh, take two. GTA. Yeah. Yes. Well. Well. Yeah. I don't think GTA. And, uh, I mean, I, I can't even imagine what money. But I do. I do like Christmas. Suge- well, uh, Zappo suggests Nintendo, which is which is you know that 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 I don't. I, Microsoft buys Nintendo. That that's the point where I'm going to start drinking. Um, <laughs> Christmas. Christmas record suggests ten cent. Um, which is which is fucking hilarious because actually that makes me it makes me think Microsoft is becoming the anti Tencent. So if you're not familiar with Tencent, Tencent's basically the the Uber Chinese game developer. Not they're not even the developer. They they they, they well, just own companies. No, they just buy everything and they've got shares in you know hundreds of I thousands think. of companies everywhere. Yeah. Mm. Um, and so Tencent's been basically aggressively buying up studios all over the place and buying into studios all over the place. And this is why a lot of uh, you, you're seeing a lot more My, Microsoft killed Fable, or supposedly they're bringing it back, uh, uh, Sahara. Um, yeah, um, but yeah, the, the Tencent's basically been buying stake in this thing, and, it, and they've been using it to t- to sort of manipulate what what kind of content in games can be shown, and, and what, what you know, trying to ease the Chinese messaging into things essentially. So in some ways, actually, Microsoft buying up all these studios is actually a pretty good protection against Tencent's influence because Tencent has got its fingers in so many pies. Yeah, mm. they were trying to buy Activision Blizzard. Mm. Oh, yeah, of course. Do they enforce censorship on their foreign things that they mm-hmm. own as as would be censored in China? So there's been a recent thing where they, they, they censored some... Genshin Impact content recently to be, uh, saying it was too uh, rude for China, so they changed the characters' designs of. Um, mm. But in in every other country, the 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 the, the original skin is um, is being used. Still, but like it's yeah. it's it's exactly that sort of salami tactics of like, okay, mm. maybe you don't do this here, and now you don't do this here. Yeah, yeah. It, then it becomes too time consuming to have the argument, so people start self censoring and just making content that they think is going to get accepted by both markets, which of course then we all suffer under Chinese rule at that point, right? Yeah, it's, well, we yeah. haven't seen that in the film industry, have we? I mean, well, exactly, yeah. it, it, exactly. <laughs> Hashtag yeah. hyperbole, right? Anyway, uh, literally got ten minutes left, and we've got a whole bunch of shit to talk about. We're not going to get to the philosophy of this, but I do want to talk about the sexiest of spacecraft ever made. I don't know why I'm so. Sorry. <laughs> Say again. Soyuz. Soyuz. <laughs> I mean, no. it, it is it is the safest way to get to the orbit. Still, technically, based based on how much it was used, but this is fine. This is beautiful. <laughs> this is uh, this is the James Webb, obviously. Um, and and we we I, I was making bold assertions about like oh you know when they do the launch we will watch it we'll live stream it'd be really good fun to do on stream like to to do that participate in that event and it'll be kind of exciting and it's like and then of course it all happens on christmas day after being cancelled like endlessly and and so obviously on christmas day uh james webb was launched and it's now something like 93 percent of the way through its its journey um and almost all of the major 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 parts of the the the, the spacecraft's uh sort of unfolding and, and sort of unpacking and, and sort of pre uh pre-use i guess um actions the kind of key critical points of failure have been achieved um there's still a couple more but most of the most of them they have redundancies for so at this point uh, i don't think anything has actually gone wrong like uh, have you heard of anything going wrong on it i think everything's gone as expected so uh, yeah. i quite on purpose decided not to follow at all uh, <laughs> the journey uh, of the of the telescope because every single news story that i was following always ended up horribly wrong uh, I expected that if I follow it, it would be stolen by pirates. <laughs> <laughs> and it's an interesting story. They will actually keep the route that it was taking on the ship secret to avoid pirates. This was yeah. actually something they could, did consider. Whoa. I mean, on the ship, on to the way to the launch pad, not on the way to the orbit. 
Mm. Uh, so Zappo says one sensor malfunctioned and the solar array deployed surprisingly early, <laughs> but these were not problems. I, I, I mm. kind of get that surprisingly early thing. It's it's like yeah, I need it anything never that's not. To me before. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we've all occasionally, uh, under a lot of stress, deployed our solar arrays a little bit early. Like that's, that's everything is functional, and there aren't any problems. That's what's important in the end. One sensor malfunctioned. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, this thing is literally like this incredibly the world's most expensive origami toy, like that's in space, and 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 it's just, you know. I don't know. It's, I I just it's almost one point four million kilometers away from Earth right now. It yeah. looks so it's awesome. I mean, we were talking at the beginning of this podcast, uh, uh, this, this 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 stream, like we were talking about like what feels like the future. And to me, the fact that we've sent that thing into space makes me feel like it's the future because that just looks. Look at its sexy weird layers and like mm. I know it's a, a heat shield, like solar solar shield, but like it's so cool. Love it. So yeah, it basically, uh, the, I think the plan is like in a few weeks, it's going to have reached its um, principal location. Like it's going to reach its orbit point where it's going to stay. And then there's going to be, I think it's like, it's something depressingly, like it's a month of like tests and warm ups and just like various um, calibrations and things before it can start even like starting to take pictures of things. So we're, we're probably a month or two away from seeing the first photos of VT. Five months of cooling and calibration. Five months? God yeah, we're not damn. getting data back for a long time. Yeah. Fucking hell. But uh, apparently, con considering, considering that the mm. uh, burn was so perfect that they actually were getting like 20 years of uh, fuel uh, for it to self-stabilize instead of like 10, that was the minimum. So mm. everything seems to be going really, really well, mm. which worries me and, and then the, the whole thing's taken out by a micro comment like <laughs> you know just like can you imagine i mean well i mean like it's 9.5 billion dollars over budget the it's chance fine. of that though uh, out of 10 billion dollars yeah, 9.5 is over budget the initial budget was half billion dollars the thing is here's, mm. here's an interesting question right uh, microsoft could have chosen to buy amazon uh, uh, fuck it could chosen to buy activision blizzard or they could have built 10 of these things <laughs> <laughs> no, like ridiculous. The, Only it's seven. like se yeah, seven, right? Because because it's like seventy billion. Like that's how much that acquisition was. Yeah. Oh God, we spent seventy billion dollars on to buy a producer of video games, and we could. Uh... Okay, now I feel depressed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> the secrets of the cosmos aren't lucrative. This is depressingly. Well, I, I mean, potentially. Or, it could yeah, be. potentially it could be, but. <laughs> Unless you take Lawrence Krauss's view on it, where he, you know, he says this won't make you a better toaster, but you know, we want to know anyway. <laughs> yeah. Nice, nice quote. Right. Um, there's a bunch of other things we could talk about, but I feel like today we're getting to that that half past uh, ten point. I think where my batteries are running low. Um, but yeah, this has been a been a fun chat. It's been it's been very movie heavy, maybe very TV heavy, pop culture heavy, but it's been fun regardless. Um, mm. I'm glad we got to the James Webb bit. That that's that's pretty important to me. But uh, yeah, I, I guess it was just coming off that Christmas lull, and so that's pretty much my life has been like two movies and and random bits of. Uh... I mean, like it's fine. It's it's good that you could rest it and watch all the movies uh, while other people have to work. It is good on you. I'm happy for <laughs> Look, your will. If I'd have known that you guys were working super hard the whole time that I was just sitting in bed watching movies, I really, really promise you, I would have enjoyed it loads more. So yeah, you would have shit talked I've, this I've, though. They would have had the added enjoyment of shit talking and just doing it as well. Just <laughs> How's it going, guys? By the way, just, I, got, I, I, I had to go downstairs for chocolate earlier. Can you believe it? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> But anyway, everybody in chat, thank you very much for being here for our first uh, episode of 2022. It's a little late in the day, but we yeah, we've we've uh, we we've, we've made it, and I'm hoping so. We're gonna back to uh, I guess our weekly cadence of uh, standard deviation. So we'll be back next next Wednesday for another one of these nonsenses. 
Um, and I'm going to start filling up the calendar for other sort of uh, in between uh, events. Um, definitely got one already in the pipeline where we could do a casual conversation with someone who's had uh, interesting life experiences. So we like doing that kind of thing on this channel. So we'll do that. Um, and there'll be no doubt more things to come. I've also realized, of course, that my BRB screen, everything that's advertised on the BRB screen is now not only late, but now a year old. So I, need, <laughs> I, need, I really do need to uh, update those things. But um, yeah, thanks everybody I mean, for being here. You could have done instead of watching all those shows, couldn't you? Will? <laughs> <laughs> I was I was I was too busy eating delicious chocolates and watching movies and <laughs> and, and and shit talking books that, that Joe kindly recommended me. That's that's it. <laughs> right. Let's let's uh, well first of all let's go to the credits. So we're going to say goodbye to to Joe and Pavel. Goodbye, Joe and Pavel. Uh, thanks very oh, much thanks as always. Uh, if you hang out and I'll come and speak to you afterwards. But we're going to go to the credit scene, which I don't know why I don't have everybody on here, but it, I guess I just have the one credit scene. So thank you, everybody, for being here. Thanks, Joe and Pavel, especially for being lovely. And uh, yeah, don't forget to check out DeviantRobot.com. Joe and Pavel are our special guests. Uh, thank you for Zappo for fantastic comments today, buddy. Uh, that was that was really cool. And Charisma, thank you very much also. Have a great night, Charisma. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's been a fun one. I'm glad, I'm glad we're back to streaming again. Uh, who are we going to raid? Oh, okay, let's go raid, raid, raid Herb Guy. That's what, who we're going to raid today. Let's give give Herb Guy some love. He's a, he's a fun streamer. I suspect he's streaming. I don't know what he's streaming right now. It's like some kind of survival game, so that'll be fun. Um, horrible host. This is very true. I, I don't deny it, but uh, but yeah, let's uh, let's go raid Herb and say hi for me. And everybody have a lovely day. Stay safe and take care. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Well, that was less of a shit show than expected. <laughs> it's always the ones. It's always the ones you're looking forward to, and you sort of have hope for that that end up being like.